Today we got some stories of when the real world hit that spoiled rich kid. I know you'll enjoy them as they're super satisfying, so sit back, relax, leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, and let's just jump right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted the first story, Gabriel, right? So anyways, there's a kid in Gabriel's class who is your very standard, typical, spoiled kid, right? His parents kinda gave him everything he ever wanted, he never had to work for anything, and honestly, low-key, that was like robbing him of something. I know you guys might think I'm crazy, but I think like when parents give kids everything they've ever wanted and they never have to work for anything, Nothing is special anymore. And I know you guys might be thinking, well, well, he got what he wanted. And I'm like, I don't know. I think there's something valuable in working for what you get. But either way, that's irrelevant to the story. So anyways, the spoiled kid, his parents buy him a $50,000 car. I don't know exactly what car this is. I just know that they spent around $50,000 for it because that exact number is important for later in the story. So uh, yeah, the spoiled kid is telling everyone about his new car. And when he was telling people and Gabriel was there, he, you, you would have thought that the spoiled kid was excited. He was grateful. He was ready to hit the day because you know what? You know what? His, his parents has bought him a, a $50,000 car. That's incredible. The fact that anyone drives a car over $20,000 beyond me, but, uh, or even over $5,000, bro, but sure, $50,000. Probably had all this, like, cool extra stuff. You would have thought, right? Surely... This kid is, you know, very grateful right now. Surely this kid is like, wow, thank you, mom and dad. You're the greatest. No. This kid was complaining because he said anything under a thousand anything under a hundred thousand dollar car is below him. Which honestly, everyone in the room like some people were trying to check this kid and they were like, bro, what do you mean beneath you? None of us have cars. The fact that you even have a car, even if it's like a $200 beater car, which, I mean, it gets you from point A to point B, so who cares? Even if you had just a car, right? You're, that's still better than most of us. But uh, no, right? The spoiled kid is like, well, no, actually, uh, because um, I I'm worth $100,000 of a car. And uh, yeah, so he basically got in a big fight with everyone, not physically, but a, like a word fight. Because people were saying you're being, like, spoiled, you're not appreciating what you had, right, or what you have. And he's saying, well, I deserve X, or I deserve Y. Like, I just deserve a $100,000 car. I don't know how else to say it, man. Um, but, yeah. So, the spoiled kid is, like, very upset. And by the end of it, he says, you know what? You know what? I'm going to have a $100,000 car by the end of the week, and you guys will see. And uh, Gabriel, the subscriber, leans in and says, well, what do you mean by that? Because... I mean, he doesn't, he has, he did, he was just bought a $50,000 car. So why on earth would his parents now buy him a $100,000 car? It just doesn't really make that much sense at all. And Gabriel goes on to say, you know, if I break, if I happen to crash my car by accident, they're definitely going to buy me a new car. And I'm going to tell them that it's going to be a $100,000 car or no car at all. And Gabriel looks at, at, at the spoiled kid. And everyone else kind of looks at the spoiled kid thinking, does that actually work? Like, are you telling me you actually believe if you, you, you can tell your parents, either get me a $100,000 car or no car at all? Like, bro, I don't know. This isn't threatening them, bro. They, they, they could very easily choose the no car at all option. Like, that's the thing I don't understand. Normally, when you're trying to pressure someone into doing something... Option A is the A is the option you want, and option B is bad for them. How is option B here bad for the spoiled kid's parents? It literally just means that they'll be able to not spend more money on a car for this kid who genuinely doesn't even need a car at this point. So yeah, um, sure enough, Gabriel, that day, intentionally started beating up his car. He didn't, like, slam full... He didn't, like, slam the gas into a tree because that could, like, damage him really bad. But he was just going around bumping his car. He's, like, bumping it into everything, slamming it up, scratching it up, and he's playing basically bumper cars with everything around him. So, yeah, he actually got the car so beat up and destroyed that he, he totaled the car, bro. Like, I don't know how he did it without, like, really damaging and, like, hurting himself or anything, but he was able to completely total the car. And, you know, he called AAA or whatever, and eventually called his parents, be like, Mom, Dad, I got in a car accident or whatever. They're like, oh, no. Because, obviously, if, you know, I would be, if my kid got into, or if, if I had a kid, right, 
or when I have a kid, right? If they got into a car accident, I'd be very concerned. And, uh, you know, when he gets there, when the parents get there, for, or Gabriel's parents, or not Gabriel, the spoiled kid's parents get there, he basically goes on to say, well, I'm going to need a new car. And they say, well, we just got you one. Like, this is kind of unfortunate that you totaled it. Um, we can look into it, though. But then they, ba- but then the spoiled kid basically exposes himself a little bit and is like, okay, well, mom and dad, you're either going to buy me a new car that's $100,000 or no car at all. And the spoiled kid's dad is like, excuse me? The spoiled kid's like, you know what? I, I, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be straightforward with you guys. I didn't get in a car crash. I wrecked my car on purpose because, you know, a $50,000 car, it's just beneath me at this point. So you guys are either going to get me a new $100,000 car or you're not going to get me a car at all. I guess in the spoiled kid's mind, this ultimatum of sorts was actually one that would like, oh my, these parents would be like, oh no, you're so right. Oh no. Uh, but actually what ended up happening was, uh, yeah, you guessed it. His parents just never bought him another car again. And yeah, this kid was like a sophomore in high school. I mean, like this kid asked for one later on, like when he was in college. Nope. His parents do not forget this. So yeah, completely backfired. And then he actually, uh, the spoiled kid actually had to start working for his stuff. And uh, because his parents started to extrapolate this attitude of you must get me the best thing ever or else to everything else in his life. So, yeah, this kid, uh, yeah, it was uh, it kind of I guess it was for the better because this kid now had to actually earn what he wanted. And that, you know, that's that makes life a little better sometimes. But, uh, yeah, the kid did not get a car, believe it or not. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted the second story, John. So anyways, John had a roommate in college. That always bra- that, Okay, so I'll just get right into it. So John had a spoiled kid roommate in college, and a couple weeks in, his roommate was bragging about how he had he chose the lightest major possible, like he chose the least intensive major possible. Not because that was the major that he had interest in, not because that was the major that he wanted to pursue a career with, but because he chose that major very specifically so that he would have to do the least amount of work possible just to pass college. Because he went on to explain to John that, you know, his parents were loaded. They had a ton of money. And they basically just told him, you need to go to college, you need to get an education, and you need to, and, and then, like, you'll be fine. Like, as long as you get an education, we'll help you out. Which, like, this is definitely the kid who watches those, like, videos. It's like, you don't need college, man. Like, college is a scam. And he's like, yeah, man, college is a scam. You're right, dude, which I'm not going to lie. There are a lot of instances where college might not be the ideal return on investment and best life choice ever. However, this is not the kid who it would apply to, right? That'd be the kid who, like, takes out a lot of student loans and is really in, like, his, like I don't know, he's really in debt from, like, his student loans, and then his degree doesn't help him get a job that is, that is strong enough to help pay off his loans quick enough, especially for the investment he made. It's also a time investment. You got a limited amount of that, et cetera. No, that does not apply to this kid. It doesn't matter if this kid had a billion dollar loans. He was fine. But anyways, right. So this kid went on to explain that to John. And now John would watch as this kid never attended classes ever. Like this kid would never be in class ever. It would just not be a thing that happened. And uh, yeah, he was like... uh, he would just, like, never do anything. This kid was always out partying, doing the, the fun stuff, only the fun stuff, never the hard stuff, which for this kid's major was like, oh, coloring time, guys. Make sure to color in between the lines for the super hard homework activity. But, yeah, this kid would literally just be, like, not paying. He would just not be in the school. He would not be doing his work. And uh, guess what happened? I know this is going to be a shocker. He actually flunked out sophomore year. Which, I mean, was incredibly difficult for his major. You literally just had to show up and just say hello. You just had to exist, and you would be fine. But he never existed in any of his classes. So I ended up flunking out. I guess the subs- uh, John, the subscriber, heard of this from like someone else who was like, kind of friendly or whatever, right? And uh, apparently the spoiled kid was like convinced that it didn't even matter at this point. That you know his parents would help him out no matter what, even if he didn't get a college education. But that was, in fact, not the case because his parents actually cut him off after this. I think they realized that they kind of uh, that they created this monster, basically, and that the reason why he sucks so bad was low key because of 
the the level of just like the lack of struggle they ever had like that they ever gave them right they never gave them any i mean you're you are a product you are a byproduct of your environment right so it is kind of on them that they created an environment that was just so incredibly bad right it was just so incredibly bad that this is how we turned out so his parents completely cut him off and uh, John heard that, you know, over the next couple of years that this kid actually kind of got his life together a little bit. I think he definitely was pouting and freaking out for the first probably six months, but eventually got his life together. He went to a trade school and he actually has a pretty, uh, pretty solid job right now. Um, and he kind of put his life together and he's definitely a much better person with a lot more, a uh, lot more character now. We're going to call the subscriber who submitted the third story, Sarah. So anyways, Sarah had like three friends at college. And uh, at this college, like it was a pretty expensive one, but uh, Sarah went here from with a uh, pretty a pretty significant financial aid package and her three friends did not. That doesn't say anything bad about the friends. That's just literally how life is sometimes. That's just the situation. However, you know, Sarah and these three friends became pretty close and they were thinking about doing something together for spring break. And uh, one of the friends was like, oh, we should go to X location. And Sarah was like, oh, that sounds great. All the friends came together. They were all super excited, right? Um, because, uh, yeah, it was a really cool vacation spot and uh, things looked pretty good. And uh, so basically Sarah got a text message from one of the friends saying, here's a link to the tickets if you want to buy them soon. Uh, we, let's all sit in the same row. So buy them tonight, basically. And Sarah didn't think anything that much of it. Until she clicked the link, she checked the tickets. The tickets were $2,000. $2,000. That's like two iPhones, which even iPhones are expensive slash overpriced low key. For one, okay, it was there and back, but still, still. So Sarah was looking at this and she was like, $2,000 for tickets? If you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. Leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing. Subscribe if you are new, and let's just jump right back into it. So anyways, Sarah is just looking at these tickets, and she's like, there's just no way that I could possibly buy these. And uh, she was like, she casually brought it up to her friends, being like, oh, wow, these tickets are $2,000. Like, that's pretty crazy. And her friends kind of looked at her. Not, okay. These friends, they were not mean people, so they did not look at her with a like, a, oh, you can't afford $2,000 for tickets? You must be broke AF. <laughs> okay, they, they didn't suck, right? But they kind of looked at her like, what? Like, I didn't even think about that. Kind of the, uh, I don't even look at the price tag, father dearest will take care of it type look, right? And Sarah started to realize that her friends didn't see any issue with it. So there was one friend in that friend group of three who Sarah thought would be the most understanding. Not that the others wouldn't be understanding, but Sarah thought that that one would be the most understanding. And she was. So, so she basically sat her down. And she's like, look, you know I want to go out with you guys. You know I, you guys are my close friends, and I want to go on spring break. I just can't, I, I can't take these tickets, right? They're just way too expensive for me. And the girl's like, wow, like, I'm sorry. I, I didn't even think of that. Like, I really should have. Like, that was, it's really embarrassing for me to, to put that on you and not like, and then and, and Sarah's like, hey, look, it's fine. It's fine. It's not your fault that, you know, you don't think of it. Sarah genuinely had no gripes against these girls and, you know, she really did like them. They were, they were good. They're good people, right? Um, they just lived in a different world. And, uh, you know, Sarah's like, you guys, you, you don't need to go anywhere else. Like you, you three can go. I promise, like promise you, I don't care. I'll just go home. I've wanted some home time anyways. You don't need to worry about it. And the girl's looking at her, says, okay, well, le let me think about it for a second. So Sarah goes back and uh, yeah, the next day comes around and uh, Sarah's hanging out with her three friends and they're not even talking about spring break. And that's when um, Sarah's friend, uh, the one that she talked to, announces that they have changed plans, that they're all gonna go back to her house which she lived like a 45 minute car ride away because, you know, you know, and, and at her house or whatever, they were then going to go and get an Airbnb in a local area or whatever. Basically what I'm trying to say is the friend that Sarah talked to, is actually pretty cool. And she stepped up to the plate because she, uh, she basically went ahead and told, I think she alluded to the other ones what the problem was. And they decided to change their entire trip from the crazy expensive flight over to a car ride 
to Sarah's friend's house, and then a car ride to an Airbnb. And uh, while gas is pretty expensive right now, it is definitely not $2,000 expensive. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the final story, Luke. So anyways, Luke had a pretty big uh, friend group in college. Um, there's a lot of people there. There's also mixed guys and girls. And uh, they all went on a vacation together. And uh, so they all pull up to the airport. And I don't know if you guys have ever been flying together, but oh, I just hit my knee on something. Ow. Anyways, so they all show up. And uh, there was a girl who was looking very lost and confused. And Luke just thought that she had never flown before, which is totally fine. Like, you don't, you, you guys don't need to fly around. You're not really missing much in the flying experience. Trust me. I don't really fly that often myself. Occasionally I'll do. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, Luke was uh, looking at her and she was very uh, lost, I guess you could say. So Luke kind of just assumed that this girl had never flown before. And uh, that's when uh, this girl goes on to say something that completely shocks Luke. She says, I've never flown public before. Which normally, when you haven't flown in general, like you've never flown on an airplane, you don't say, I've never flown public. Like, Luke's saying to himself, yeah, it's all public. Like, what are you talking about? And that's when this girl specifies, like, no, I mean, I do fly. And Luke looks at her, like, what? You just contradicted yourself. You just said that I, I don't fly public. And the girl looks at him and says, no, I fly all the time. I've only flown on private jets, though. I've never flown on a, like a public airport. And Luke's like, what? Yeah, so basically this girl has uh, never flown in a public airport before. She's only flown on private jets. And uh, so Luke's like, okay, I guess I learned something new about you today. I did not know you were mega loaded. But anyways, um, I can help you out, though. Basically, Luke is like, uh, yeah, I can, uh, I, I can help guide you through. So basically, they go to TSA. She's like, what's this? And he's like, well, they have to check you. And he's like, what? Or she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, so just you have to take off your She's like, I don't want to take off my shoes. And he's like, uh, I don't think you have a lot of choice in the matter. Like... I don't know how else to say it. I, I just don't think you have a lot of choice, but, uh, okay. And she's like, fine, I'll do it. So she goes through. So this girl is complaining the entire time, right? And uh, she hasn't told anyone else that this is her first time flying public, so everyone else just thinks that she's, like, you know, used to this, but still annoyed with it, because even if you're used to something, it can still kind of be annoying, right? But no, the truth is, in fact, she's just never flown private before. So she eventually gets on, they, they load onto the airplane, and she looks in, and she's like, Luke. And Luke's like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, is this actually all the space we have? And she's pointing towards the first class seats, which her parents bought her first class tickets. And Luke's like, uh, wait until you see the seats that I'm sitting in. And he points back there, and she literally gasps, because the horrors of uh, flying, right? Which, yeah, I'm not going to lie flying uh i've never flown in a cl first class seat i've definitely like i always like economy whatever it it does the job it definitely does the job but wow that is crowded i'm not gonna like that is cr those seats are small they are cramped but yeah so uh after they get off the flight sarah uh, lucas uh, sorry the, the girl is complaining the entire time about how, uh, once they get off, she's like, oh my god, my legs, they're so stiff. And uh, no one was really, like, being like, oh, I'm so sorry, you have to sit in the first class seats. Oh, I'm so sorry, that must be so hard for you. They were all kind of just, like, ignoring her because, yeah, they were pretty stiff, too. But guess what? They weren't saying anything about it. And also, guess what? They were in actually, they were actually in tight seats. She was not. Like, the first class seats that she was sitting in, she could just recline as much as she wanted to, but no, right? No, of course not. She had to be the one who complained. They couldn't complain, though, obviously. And, uh, yeah, after that, she was pretty cool, but uh, Luke learned something new about her, his friend today, and that, uh, that she had never flown in a public airplane before, which, what? Click on the video on screen right now, I know you'll enjoy it. From a teacher exposing a spoiled brat in front of his crush, to a rich kid getting a good life lesson from the teacher, these are some stories of teachers humiliating spoiled rich kids. And one of these spoiled rich kids actually threatened the teacher and it got super intense. 
So there's a rich kid in the subscribers class, and just because you're rich doesn't mean that you're a bad person or the people don't like you, but this kid was obnoxious. This kid was annoying. And anyways, this story all started one day when this kid was in class and he was telling a little story about what happened that weekend before. So basically, the kid was in class and he was just all like, hey guys, like, it was my birthday recently and I received a new car. And everyone, remember, this is like, I don't know, a sophomore year of high school. So barely anyone had a car. And especially if they were going to have a car, it wouldn't be a car like the spoiled rich kid was going to have. We also know that the spoiled rich kid's car would look like this, and not like any other car that any of us would receive. But anyways, the story isn't just the fact that the spoiled rich kid received a super expensive fancy car for his birthday, even though that's really crazy. The story that the spoiled kid was telling the entire class was he said, hey man, like, I got this car, it was super expensive, and guess what, guys, like, you won't even believe it, but I was like, you know what, Dad, this car isn't expensive enough for me. So I got in the car, I hopped in my whip, I drove down the street, and I intentionally totaled the car. The entire class is just completely shocked at this point. They're completely just... To, the, the class, the teacher, and everybody is looking at the spoiled rich kid to see if he's just joking, to see if he's, you know, just clowning around. But the spoiled rich kid had an extremely serious expression on his face. And that's when people realized this kid wasn't joking. This kid wasn't messing around. The spoiled rich kid actually crashed his super expensive Lambo, Tesla, whatever type car just because it wasn't expensive enough. He wanted the Bugatti, man. He wanted to be top G. So at this point, the teacher was having enough of this kid. Because if you guys didn't realize, the teacher was listening in on the entire story. The teacher heard all of it. So the teacher actually breaks, kind of like budges into the conversation. Because this was a conversation between the spoiled kid and his classmates. But the teacher decides that it's time for them to jump into this. And the teacher goes in and basically says to the spoiled kid in front of everyone, humiliating him in front of the entire class, the teacher tells him that, you know, he needs to be more respectful of, you know, what his parents give him. He needs to understand that it's his parents' like gift to him. It's not like anything he's worked for. And then he needs to understand that money doesn't grow on trees. You guys might be thinking that, you know, the spoiled kid is having a massive temper tantrum right now. He's having a meltdown. He just got owned by the teacher. No, the spoiled kid decides to fight back. So the spoiled kid looks at the teacher and is like, you're just jealous that you don't have my Lambo supercar. And the teacher looks back at him and says, you know what? Maybe I'm a little jealous. The whole class kind of goes shocked for a second because the teacher just admitted maybe that they were a little bit jealous. But the teacher wasn't admitting defeat here. The teacher says, maybe I am a little bit jealous. But you know what I'm not? You know what I'm not jealous of? You. Because I know for a fact that you're not a happy individual. I know for a fact that you're not a content individual because you did not work for the things that you have. You did not work for the spoils of your labor, you, the fruits of your labor. You did not collect the spoils from anything that you did. You just exist, therefore you receive. And bro, the kid and the spoiled kid in front of the entire class, just, you know, he almost has this like epiphany that the teacher, what the teacher is saying is actually correct. It's like the spoiled kid realized that everything in his entire life had just been given to him because he was in a rich family, not because he deserved it. And at that point, the spoiled kid gets up and is like, I, I need to go to the bathroom and runs out of the class. So let me know in the comment section down below if you think that the spoiled kid, you know, that the teacher went too hard on the spoiled kid here, or if he basically got what he deserved. The spoiled kid in this story might have been pretty spoiled, but at least this spoiled brat wasn't as bad as this one. So this all happened one day in class, and there was a spoiled rich kid, and this kid didn't just come from a very standard rich kid family. Like, there's definitely a rich kid you know who his parents maybe make, you know, maybe top 5%, maybe top 10%. So they were definitely, like, rich kid parents, maybe just successful lawyer, banker, whatever. This kid was, like, the rich kid 
if he was in a group of rich kids, right? This kid had mo- his parents made money out of their butts, bro. It legitimately grew on trees for them. I don't know what their parents did. I have no idea, but they were like superstars at whatever they did. And the thing, the thing is, the fact that his parents made that much money unfortunately went straight to this kid's head and it gave him a pretty inflated ego. And this all started one day in class It was the very last day before summer vacation, right? It was the last day of class in eighth grade. They were gonna be graduating onto high school. They were about to go to summer for summer vacation. Vibes were really good in the school. Things were seeming really nice. However, the spoiled kid just had to be the one to mess it up. So the teacher decided just for a fun last day activity because the teacher really had nothing else planned as it was the last day of school. It's not like she can be like, okay, now we're going to learn calculus in the next 30 minutes. I know you guys can do it. No, so she just decided that she was going to have a kind of a nothing, not a nothing activity, but a very light, easy, fun activity. So she decided that she was going to go around and ask everyone in the class, what they did, what they were going to do over the summer, what their plans were, and if they didn't have that many plans, what they wanted to do. Very nice, easy activity. made a lot of sense because they didn't need to really focus in on anything else hard right now. So sure, might as well go for it. So sure enough, the teacher says, all right, class, so I'm going to ask you guys to go around by one, one by one and say what you're doing over the summer. So Jimmy over here says that, you know, he's going to be working at the ice cream shop. And uh, Sally over there says she's going to be going to sleepaway camp, a sleepaway camp she's been going to for her entire life. But eventually you get to the spoiled kid. Yep, the spoiled kid. Play ominous music. You already know this is going downhill. So sure enough, right, the spoiled kid goes on a 10-minute tirade. And remember, people had been answering this question in the span of, like, 30 seconds to two minutes at a maximum. This kid goes on for 10 whole minutes detailing every detail of his super expensive, exquisite, uh, super, super intense vacation that no one has ever heard of. Basically, this kid was saying, well, first of all, I'm gonna go to the south of France, and then I'm gonna go to Monaco, and then I'm gonna go to Germany, and then I'm gonna, and just gonna list off every European country. And he also, also, don't get it wrong, right? The, the kid makes sure to let you know every location he's going to, every hotel he's going to, every fun event he has planned. And then he also says how much each of these events costs. I'm not even kidding you. This kid legitimately is telling everyone, oh, this cost, this is going to cost me, cost me. Okay, bro, I know who you're talking about. You mean your parents. This is going to cost us, aka his parents, X number of dollars per night. This, and by the end of it, right, he's basically totaled like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 for a vacation, bro. That's crazy. And he's just like, by the end of it, 10 minutes, remember, 10 whole minutes go by. And that's when the spoiled kid is done talking about all the crazy things. He's like, oh, I'm going to spend all this money, uh, whatever, right? I'm going to go on the craziest vacation ever. And uh, first of all, by the end of it, half the class is just shocked by how much money he's spending. The other class doesn't even know how much money he's spending because they were so bored two minutes into it that they literally fell asleep. So you guys might be thinking, okay, well, that's pretty bad, Connor. And that's definitely more spoiled than the last guy, but it can't be getting more spoiled. No, you're incorrect. The spoiled kid gets even more spoiled. I'm not even kidding. Because here's the thing. If the spoiled kid was just going on and on about how crazy of a vacation he was going to have, maybe I'd give him a pass. But I know for a fact I'm not giving him a pass for what he's about to say. So eventually he finishes after about 10 minutes about talking about this super crazy, this vacation is going to go on. And the teacher's like, okay, spoiled kid, thanks for sharing, I guess. And then, you know, the teacher's like, all right, you know, Gerald or whoever's next to him, it's time for you to go. So Gerald starts talking about what he's going to do on vacation. And it's nothing too extravagant. I mean, not even just compared to what the spoiled kid is doing. He's mostly just going to stay home, spend time with family, maybe get a summer job, walk his dog. Really just a very nice, relaxing, normal person summer. And the spoiled kid turns over to someone next to him and whispers, "This is this what poor people do over the summer? And this kid, the spoiled kid, intentionally whispered it extremely loud. You know those people, when they whisper, 
they like they t- they talk in the hushed voice like this, but they say it really loud. That's basically what the spoil kid did here. So very clearly, he wanted people to hear that he was pretending to whisper that, you know, he thought that this is what poor people did. I don't know why, but he wanted that. He just wanted people to know he was a jerk, I guess. Bro, don't ask me. I'm not the spoil kid here. But the thing is, the teacher heard this and the teacher was already kind of, I don't know. I don't know if the teacher was annoyed or just thought it was not the right place for the spoiled kid to talk about his vacation in the way that he did. So he already wasn't really liking the spoiled kid at this point. And that, and then when he heard the spoiled kid say something as egregious as that, the, the teacher knew that he couldn't just stay silent. The teacher knew that he needed to own this kid just, you know, for the kid's own sake, for the spoiled kid's sake. The teacher goes on to say, like, spoiled kid, what did you just say about Gerald's vacation? The spoiled kid's like, uh, I didn't say anything, man. And, you know, one of the classmates low-key snitched him out and was like, no, this kid, no, spoiled kid did say something. And spoiled kid's like, dude, shut up. It was very clear the spoiled kid wanted people to hear him, but I don't think it was clear that the spoiled kid actually wanted a confrontation, which is what he was getting. So sure enough, the spoiled kid's like, um, I didn't say anything, dude. You're overreacting. And that's when the teacher goes on to say, spoiled kid, can you stand up to the front of the class, please? And the spoiled kid has this shocked look on his expression. And everyone else in the class was shocked as well because what was the teacher going to ask him to do standing up in front of the entire class? Well, the teacher was about to go crazy, bro. So the teacher was like, spoiled kid, why did you make that comment about Gerald's vacation? And the spoiled kid's like, uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, why did you make those comments about Gerald's vacation? This, the teacher was not going to let the spoiled kid off the line. He's not going to let him off for this one. This time, the teacher is going in. And Gerald's a little embarrassed because like, he doesn't want everyone to know that the spoiled kid said, oh, you have, a, you have a poor person vacation. He's not trying to get everyone to hear that. But at the end of the day, he's respecting what the teacher's doing. Because the teacher goes on to say, spoiled kid, do you believe that you're entitled to such a vacation? And the spoiled kid's like, um, what? And the teacher's like, spoiled kid, what if I was to call your parents right now in front of everyone and tell them what you said? At this point, everyone in the class realized that, yo, this teacher doesn't mess around, bro. This teacher's going in hard. And the spoiled kid starts to tear up a little bit. He's like, teacher, I didn't mean to say that. I'm so sorry. But the teacher had legitimately no mercy. The teacher calls up his parents. His mom picks up and it's on speakerphone. So she's like, hello, hello. And the teacher's like, yes, uh, I'm just calling about your son. And she's like, oh, is my son okay? And the teacher's like, yes, but no. Your son said something to another student that is really just not acceptable. And the mom's like, oh my God, what did he say? And you know, at this point, the spoiled kid is crying in front of the entire class right now. It's super embarrassing for him. The entire class is watching him as he's getting completely wrecked by the teacher. But sure enough, the teacher goes on to say like, oh, so he was explaining, you know, the summer plans he had for this summer with everyone as I instructed him to do. But when a fellow classmate of his explained his stories or his plans for the summer, your son said that his play, like what he was doing was what a poor person would do because it was not what he was doing. And there was a bit of a silence on the phone because you could tell that the mom of the spoiled kid was very much taken aback by what her son said, what his son, what her son said, right? And the mom's like, I'm so sorry. Tell my son to apologize right now. I'm going to have a meeting with him when he gets back and his vacation might be looking a little bit different. Thank you for letting me know. And at this point, the spoiled kid is just having a massive meltdown in front of the entire class, and uh, everyone's just looking at him awkwardly like, okay, this is really unfortunate. And the teacher's like, all right, spoiled kid, you can sit back down. And uh, I don't know if this humiliation was a little bit too crazy. Uh, Please let me know in the comment section if you think this one was too extreme or not. But at least, at least this spoiled brat was not as bad as this final one. I know it's hard to believe, but at least he wasn't as bad as this one. So anyways, this kid, this spoiled kid, everyone knew as the super rich spoiled kid, right? He had been gone from class for an entire month. 
This kid was on vacation to like Mykonos or the Cayman Islands or super fancy resort or just going on like a crazy expensive rich kid vacation when everyone else in class, it was like the middle of winter, they were just getting there in the cold early in the morning getting to class, doing their work, studying their, like, I don't know, their algebra two or whatever they were taking. Everyone was working hard while the rich kid was out there partying, having a fun time, relaxing, enjoying a life that they never could. And the thing is, right, he's gone for a month, and he doesn't tell anyone at the school that he's gone for a month. And at a minimum, he doesn't tell the teacher of this class that he's gone for a month. So one day... One random day, it's not a random day, it is the day before a massive exam that they're taking in this class. So the teacher is doing a review day or a a kind of review session type day, right? And the teacher is going on to be like, all right, class, so this is like what you need to know, this is what you need to be prepared for. And all of a sudden, 10 minutes into class, so it's already late if you're to come now, the spoiled kid who's been gone for an entire month joins the class. The entire class is pretty shocked at this point. They look over, they look at the spoiled kid with this look of shocked expression of like, you still go here? What? But sure enough, the spoiled rich kid comes in and he's he's like, oh, like, what's up guys? (laughs) Been a second, right? And the teacher's like, you still attend this class? What? And uh, yeah, so sure enough, the spoiled kid um, just comes in, he sits down and pretends like nothing is happening. And so the teacher decides, okay, whatever. Well, I'm just going to keep teaching class as if nothing happened either. So the, the teacher starts talking about how they have a massive exam tomorrow. And that's when the spoiled kid raises his hand, which, what's the spoiled kid doing raising his hand, bro? Like, I, I don't get that. Like, he's been gone for so long. But anyways, the spoiled kid raises his hand. And uh, sure enough, the teacher's like, yes. And the teacher says yes with a bit of like confusion because what's the, what's the spoiled kid doing raising his hand right now? And the spoiled kid's like, uh, teacher, like I clearly don't have to take this exam, right? I mean, I should get a, like a two to three week extension because I've been gone for so long. And the thing is, right, if this kid was gone for like medical leave or a family issue, or at least told the school slash teacher about this, I would have some sympathy if the teacher didn't give him like an extension. However, the spoiled kid didn't tell anyone. And the reason he was gone is because he was too busy partying and doing insanely rich kid things to take the test or to, or not to take the test, to be in school. And he just shows up one day, the day before the exam, expecting that he's gonna get, no, that's not happening. And the teacher agreed with me, it's not happening. And the teacher tells him, no, like you're taking the exam like everyone else, like tomorrow, like you didn't tell anyone about the fact that you were gone for so long. Why do you expect an extension? And the spoiled kid looks at the teacher and is like, very funny, now where's my extension? As if he was entitled to something, as if he deserved to get an extension just because, oh, I deserve everything. Because if I want something, I will get it, which is just pretty crazy in my opinion. But anyways, the teacher, holds that, like, says, no, I'm not joking. You're not getting anything. And that's when the spoiled kid, who's also super entitled and thinks that he's, like, some massive karate expert as well for some reason, even though he is not that athletic, if we're being real, stands up, is like, you don't want this smoke, bro. Bro, whenever some, like, I don't know, some, like, sophomore in high school that's looking all dweeby and dorky says, you don't want this smoke, like, it is the most ridiculous thing. And the teacher is looking at this kid like, and says to him, did you just threaten me? Did you just threaten the, t- the kids like, oh, you don't want the smoke, bro? That's what I'm saying. You didn't want the smoke and you're, you're going to get it if you don't give me an extension. And the whole class is looking at this kid like, this kid cannot be serious right now. And the kid's like, dude, you don't want the smoke. You don't want the smoke. And the teacher's like, I'm not giving you an extension. You're taking the final exam like everyone else is tomorrow. And the kid's like, it's just not happening. Like, you're crazy for that. And the teacher's like, I'm the crazy one here? So the kid, the spoiled kid, gets right up in the teacher's face. And the thing is, this teacher is not some small little dainty teacher that needs protecting. The funny thing is, if anyone, the spoiled kid is the small dainty one who needs protecting. 
This teacher is like ex-military, ex-marines, math teacher who gets up at six in the morning and eats nails for breakfast. This teacher is not one that is meant to be messed with. But the spoiled kid apparently doesn't get the memo on this. This is because the spoiled kid is like, I'm going to give you one chance to change your mind. And the teacher is just staring him, him down as the entire class watches on. And the spoiled kid's like, you have one shot to change your mind or you're going to be in a world of pain. And the teacher says, bring it on, buddy. And there, the tension in this room, you could just cut with a knife at this point. It is this extreme. So sure enough, the spoiled kid, who believes that he is some kind of like godly entity that can destroy, who deserves everything and can destroy anyone, goes to punch the teacher in the face. He thinks that the best case scenario here, the best choice for him, is to punch the teacher in his actual face. But this teacher is an absolute savage. This is an ex-military guy. You don't want to mess with him. He legitimately catches this kid's wrist mid punch. The kid is swinging on him and instead of like dodging or blocking it, he catches, he grabs onto his wrist. At this point, the entire class watches as the kid, the spoiled kid, has his wrist, like his fist, fully extended an inch away from the teacher's face. But his fist is frozen in midair because the teacher has latched on to this kid's wrist. And at this point, the teacher, the, 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 the kids in the class legitimately say that the teacher, for a split second, had this smirk on his face. He had this little smile on his face. Because within a split second later, the teacher gets this kid on the ground. He does some crazy, like, martial arts maneuver, flips the kid around, and pins him on the ground. And he says, what do you guys get the security? So a kid in the class, you know, obviously gets up, leaves, Greg gets the security, security officer comes down, gets the spoiled kid. The teacher explains quickly that the kid tried to swing on him and the kid was escorted to the Click on the video the on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. From a kid who thinks he can be a jerk because his dad runs the place and gets destroyed to a rich kid who thinks he is great at everything because he's never been told no in his life and life comes to him fast. These are the most satisfying stories of rich kids who think that they run the world getting destroyed in the real world. So the subscriber who submitted the story one summer had an internship at an investment bank or bank or one of those type of banking internships. Basically, this kid was in college and he wanted to go into kind of banking or finance. So he, he, he got one of those internships at a bank and these were pretty competitive. So he was pretty, uh, he was pretty well prepared. He was pretty professional and he was definitely up to par with the quality that this bank wanted. However, you know, there was a couple other kids that were interns as well. I think the intern class was like four to five, but like w the one of the interns, right? was distinguishably a lot worse than the others and very clearly did not care. The reason was, was because this kid did not get in this internship out of merit, out of skill, out of, you know, grit and the ability to, you know, persevere through tough times. No, this kid got the internship because his dad was literally CEO of the bank. This wasn't like one of the big banks like JP Morgan Chase, Citibank. This was a much smaller one, but it was still really big enough. And obviously if your dad is CEO, it's you can probably swing an intern position at it. Like you could probably do that. Um, so anyways, right, on the first day of like meeting all of them, right, it was like the first like meeting was over Zoom and then they were gonna do it in person. But there was like a little like pre-meeting type thing where they told you about like information, uh, what to expect, um, a little get together, the other interns and the subscriber and all the interns got together on a Zoom meeting. Well, four of them did because the fifth one was 10 minutes late. Can you guys guess who the fifth one was? Let's see, A, B, C. A, it was a subscriber. B, it was another kid who actually worked hard to get there. Or C, the CEO's son who didn't have to do a thing and got the internship because of nepotism. Have you answered A or B? Well, uh, I don't know, you're just wrong because it was C. Sure enough, it was the CEO's son who was like 10 minutes late or whatever. So while the kids were like sitting in the Zoom meeting, like just listening to, okay, so you're going to have to get there by you know, nine every morning, uh, you're expected to do X, Y, or Z. If you have any questions, here's a good contact for me or your direct supervisor. Uh, like this isn't like supposed to be like competitive, like comp like you're supposed to like work with each other. Uh, like you could all get job offers. Cause the thing about the internship is like, you really want a job offer at a job offer afterwards. 
that's like the best option or in a couple of years or whatever. And so they were trying to say like, it's not competitive between you guys. You could all get job offers, really work together because that's what we do at the bank anyways. And then like 10 minutes in, this kid just shows up randomly. And this, you know, this kid just like comes in, he's all disheveled. All the other guys dress up for their Zoom meeting because like they were kind of told in the email, hey, be a little formal. Like I know it's over Zoom or whatever, but kind of like show up, you know, just kind of dress up a little bit for Zoom. But this kid came in, with a big sweatshirt on, backwards hat, which is totally fine to walk around in, and like if you're just a totally fine casual outfit. But bro, if you're really trying to like, I don't know, put it together for like a, an official meeting or something like that, and it says don't dress casually, then don't dress casually. But sure enough, since this was the kid at the CEO, he literally didn't care, and he came in ten minutes late, dressed up all sloppily or whatever. So, anyways, twenty minutes go by, and it's time for all the kids to introduce each other or introduce each other, introduce themselves and meet each other. So sure enough, right, they go around and uh, they, they all say their first and last names. And the subscriber notices, because like the subscriber did a lot of research about the bank just because during the interview he wanted to, he was prepared if they're going to ask a history question about the bank, like when was it founded, who's the current CEO, what is like all these kind of information, right? They ended up not asking those specific questions, but for that reason, the subscriber knew all this information. So when he heard the last name of this kid, it matched up with the last name of the CEO of the bank. So, you know, very quickly with a nice little Google search, um, the CEO of the bank was like, it was a big, it wasn't a huge bank, but it was a big enough bank that this guy had like a public profile. And through some Google, uh, Google searching, right, he found that the name of the kid who was in the internship program happened to match up exactly with the name of the kid of the CEO of the bank. And after a bit more research, he found a photo and the photos matched up. So after the Zoom meeting and doing a bit of research, the subscriber realized that one of the interns is actually the kid of the CEO of the bank that they were working at. So anyways, on the first day, sure enough, this kid, uh, the subscriber and all the other interns actually worked to get there. They, uh, you know, they, they struggled. They got, you know, they understand what it takes or they understand how valuable this is because they put in the work to get it. That's one thing you'll see. When people are just handed everything, they won't understand the value of it. In fact, a perspective is, in a sense, they're robbed of the true um, importance. Like, they're, they are robbed of, you know, the, the joy of, you know, reaping the rewards because, you know, you're not reaping the rewards anything. You're just giving it. But anyways, it was very, very, very apparent in the way that all these kids, like, uh, showed up because the ones that worked for it showed up five minutes early, if not 10 minutes early, because, you know, you never know how long it takes with traffic, with navigating the, you know, the New York City bus system or train system, whatever, right? Um, so sure enough, they showed up like at minimum 5, 10, 15 minutes early. But, the, you know, the spoiled kid, we're just going to call him the spoiled kid from this point on. He literally came in 25 minutes late. And he had some lame excuse like, uh, Sorry, man, bus got like, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like traffic or something like that, which like fair enough, like sure, I guess. But at the end of the day, you got to be prepared for that. It's your first day. If that happens like two weeks into the job, then I think that's more acceptable. But on your first day of work, especially for something really important like this, you got to show up at least give yourself a, a good enough margin, especially if you're doing work in New York City. Like I know some of you guys are out of the country or the country I live in the United States and you've never been to New York City. And some of you guys is in the country have never been in New York City. That place is crazy. You got to give yourself a lot of time because like traffic and uh, stuff will happen. And especially when you want it to least happen. So sure enough, they're in there the first day and they're doing work. And when you're an intern, especially for like a banking intern, you're not doing anything too crazy. Like for the most, you will be like, the most extensive thing you'll do is probably like research or something like that. But for the most part, you're kind of just a coffee monkey and a uh, PowerPoint slide monkey and a, an Excel monkey. You're not doing that much. So sure enough, right, they're just rearranging stuff on Excel. Um, they're just kind of like editing PowerPoint slides. It's a lot of work, but it's nothing's like that hard or that interesting or stimulating if they kind of just give like the interns and the very low level employees like kind of the grunt work that no one really wants to do so they're all sitting around doing it and they're all given one big glob of an assignment so it's like they're given one stack where it's like okay you got to do all of this you got to do this um all this kind of stuff right so sure enough there are, you know there's all these things that they got to do and um the thing is though it wasn't divided up evenly between them it was just given to one of them and they said okay I need you to delegate all the, uh, 
I don't know. I need you guys to delegate the work between, like, amongst yourself. We're not going to delegate the work for you. That's up to you guys. So sure enough, right, they just kind of like all four of them, not the fifth one, all four of them, they go in and, uh, you know, they just, you know, they go in, they grab some of the work or they delegate some of the work if it's not like paperwork. Because a lot of it was Excel, PowerPoint, stuff like that, research. So the one kid who didn't was the spoiled kid. Because why would he have to work? His dad runs the place. He just shows up because his dad isn't going to let him play Fortnite all summer like he did last summer, right? He actually has to get a job or something. Like, screw you, dad. Give me all these opportunities. I just want to play Fortnite and do nothing all day. Me. But anyways, right. Uh, sure enough, like all the other, the, the other four interns, including the subscriber, kind of gave this kid a side eye. Like, are you really just going to sit there and not do anything? So... Yeah, sure enough, they end up doing all the work, and the kid is on his phone watching, like, TikTok videos or something, and by, like, 8 at night or something, because they wanted to make sure they got it all done and really show initiative on the first day. First of all, the kid left, like, at 3, which they're supposed to leave at 5, and the others stayed till 8. Loki, the reason was because it was work for five people to finish at five, but if you only have four people working on it, you're going to have to, like, stay a couple extra hours because the last person didn't pull through. You really do hate to see it. And this, pat this was a pattern that literally just continued on and on and on again. However, you know, one of these days, it's actually like about a month into the internship, and the interns are doing really well. I mean, the four of them are. The fifth one, aka the spoiled kid, literally sits there and does nothing all day. So uh, is he doing well? I don't know. But it, it really good reputation. Um, the interns are accruing right now. Everyone sees them as really uh, capable and... Uh, just really impressed by what they're able to do. So now they're given a more official assignment. And also for the first time ever, they're each given individual things they're supposed to do. Because the reason for this is they're each assigned to individual teams. So each of them is like given as part of a team or whatever. And they're all given a very important research role. Basically, they've been doing research the whole time or the four of them have, have been doing research. The spoiled kid had not. And uh, they had done a really good job, so they were all, like, four to five different teams were, you know, going to be presenting to investors, and they were pretty important meetings. So these interns were given a super important job, and they were informed of how important the job was, to do research to give to the analysts and associates to put together for slides that would be given to the VPs or the MDs or whatever that would then present it. So what ended up happening was pretty funny. Because basically what happened here was you have to realize the spoiled kid had not done any research at all for the last two weeks. So he has no idea what this whole research thing is, right? So all the other kids do a really good job. The subscriber and the other three, they do a really good job. They supply really good information to the VPs and the analysts and associates or whatever. They put together good presentations. And, you know, it's, it's a good enough presentation that if the investor wanted to invest based on the information, they would have. And if it wasn't right for them, then they wouldn't invest. But it wasn't because, you know, the information was bad or it was presented in a poor way. However, with the spoiled kid, the spoiled kid, first of all, he doesn't know how to do any of it because he's never done any of it. Second of all, he's too arrogant to ask for help. He's too kind of like full of himself to believe that he ever has to ask anyone else for help, especially the, oh, the poor kids that he was like working with. Like he'd never have to ask them. He's above them. They're below him. And uh, a combination of arrogance and uh, procrastination led him to a point where like at two hours before the deadline, he's like, OK, I just got to figure this out. And the thing is, right, instead of actually doing research on, you know, whatever specific thing they're supposed to do research on, he just plugged in random numbers. The thing is, though, the random numbers were like close enough to being the right numbers. Like if you had no basically if you had no context and you just believed these numbers at face value, it's like if I said a, like a hamburger had a trillion calories in it, you wouldn't believe me because that's not reasonable. But if I said a hamburger had 300 calories and it actually had 800, you would probably believe me even if 300 felt a little bit low because it's in the range of possibility. Same thing if a, like a, I don't know, a piece of steak had 500 calories, but I said it had 1200, you would probably believe me. But if I said it had a billion, you wouldn't believe me. So these kids, so the spoiled kid put in random numbers that were close enough to being realistic that the, you know, the analysts and VPs didn't check them over because to check them over would literally to be doing the grunt work again. And the whole point of the interns was to do the grunt work and to find the information. 
So the analysts and VPs created this whole presentation or an entire like deck or whatever these like bank people do. What I, I have, I'm not a banker, right? I, I'm a little bit, I, I'm into stocks for my own personal, you know, financial security. If you ever want me to talk about that on my like second channel, let me know. But uh, yeah, so they put together a whole presentation. However, mid demonstration to these like very sophisticated, important investors, there was obvious holes in the presentation and something was fishy and the investors were questioning the numbers that they were showing. And the analysts and VPs were starting to realize on the spot that something was not right about their models. Something was not right about the information that they were given. And apparently the presentation was a massive disaster. Like the whole thing completely exploded in their faces. So all the analysts the next day are kind of sitting in their office. They have a little, we're not analysts, sorry. The interns are all kind of sitting in their little intern office, right? So when they're all sitting in there, one of the, uh, one of the, like the, the managers walks in and says, I need to speak to the spoiled kid right now. And the spoiled kid is on his phone playing like, I don't know, Fortnite or something. And like the other three or other four of them are doing work and the spoiled kid looks up and the other kids look over too because they're like, what? And like a whole team of like executives walk in and like, we just lost like our fourth biggest client because the information you gave us was faulty. Like, where did you get that information? He's like, uh, I just, and they're looking at him. They're like, we looked over the data and on closer inspection, it looks like you just randomly put numbers in there. And all the other kids are kind of looking at each other like, okay, I totally believe the spoiled kid would do something stupid enough like that. Like, it's totally not out of the realm of possibility that the spoiled kid would just spam in random numbers and not actually do the work. And uh, yeah, sure enough, it, this, is, this is probably the greatest thing. The spoiled kid's dad is called down and he walks down into the office and he just has this look of like disappointment right on his face. And what ends up happening is the spoiled kid's own dad tells him that he's let go, that he's fired. The spoiled kid's dad fires his own son because he messed up as an intern so badly that they lost their like fourth biggest client. I'm not even kidding you. And if you thought that this spoiled kid was bad, then you are not you are not ready for the next spoiled kid story. You're simply not physically prepared for the amount of spoiled in this next story. Well, let's hop into it. So the subscriber in this story is working at a sports broadcasting company as an intern over the summer. So I don't really know. It wasn't like ESPN or anything too big like that, but it was a pretty big, at least locally, sports broadcasting company. So they covered all things in sports or whatever, sports media, uh, you know, stuff like that. I, I, I'm not super well-versed in that field. So if I make some mistakes like uh, with technical things and you guys are super big sports fans, just it, keep going. <laughs> don't, 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 uh, you know, don't take it too personally in the comments. I'll do my best. But anyways, right. So sure enough, right. There's, there was two interns. There's a subscriber and then there's a the spoiled kid, right? So basically the spoiled kid, it wasn't as if, you know, his dad was the CEO of the company like last time. However, his dad was like a really big shot, like a hot shot, like big boy lawyer type dude. And he, like, knew the guy who, like, ran the sports company and basically said, like, hey, like, uh, my, my son really wants to be an intern here. I know he's not qualified, but remember when we represented your company last time and we did a really good job? I would really appreciate it if you did a favor for me, too. Kind of like a conversation like that happened behind closed doors. And sure enough, the very not-so-qualified spoiled kid got a job with a subscriber who was fairly qualified. And you might be thinking, oh, the subscriber just like has a big head saying that he's qualified. Well, at the end of the day, the subscriber didn't have a dad who like try basically bribed his way in. So he was at least qualified enough that he did need it to be bribed in, right? So uh, sure enough, the spoiled kid's arrogance was put on display almost right away because as interns, they were given a lot of work. So in some cases, when you're an intern, you're given nothing of importance, like literally nothing of importance. And I mean, that's fair enough. When you're an intern, you're coming in with no experience and you just want to, you just want to gain some understanding of what you're doing here. But other places, interns will be given, you know, really important jobs. They're normally not jobs that require a lot of expertise because I mean, how can you get the expertise without having the expertise? Or how can you do something that needs a lot of knowledge without accumulating that knowledge, you know? But sometimes like really kind of like jobs that anyone can do can turn out to be super, super important for like down the, like the funnel, right? Like getting data, like getting information, 
can be like, you know, almost anyone could do it if they're taught briefly, but that is a super important role, you know what I mean? So sure enough, right, one of their very first assignments, because they were both given two different assignments, but they were in the same room, so they were like talking about it or whatever. Basically, one of their first assignments was to give information, like real quick information for an on-air broadcasting program that was going to go on literally an hour later. So they're like, hey, like this will only take you about 10 minutes, so we're giving you an hour to do it. But basically, we need you to get X, Y, and Z. It's like information on the broadcasters will use it online, like on air. And um, yeah, so it's super important, whatever, right? So they're sitting in the room and the subscriber, he's going to have to go up first and the spoiled kid goes up second, or at least that's the line of like the information that'll be sent. So the subscriber really quickly goes up, finds like exactly what he's trying to look for. And uh, yeah, gets it done in five minutes because uh, bro's efficient, bro's got it done. And he sets, he sends it upstream basically right away. So he's sitting there and the spoiled kid is kind of just like going around browsing ESPN, going on Twitter a little bit. So since they have a lot of time and they're not really that much in a rush yet because they still have like 50 minutes till it's very much deadline, the subscriber asks the spoiled kid, so, like, uh, what do you have? And the spoiled kid's like, well, I'm supposed to send them stuff about golf or something, but that's really boring. I don't know if I want to do that. And this, it, the subscriber gives the spoiled kid a look. Kind of like, okay, you find it boring, but you're not going to be the only person who watches this TV program. Obviously, they want you to have, you know, golf information send it upstream because that's what's on air. That's what you're supposed, or radio or whatever, right? They're like, you know, you send that upstream because that's what people at the time, that like, they need a variety of sports. There's people who are listening to that. I know that you don't find it interesting, but there are definitely people who are tuning in specifically to listen to that, you know? So sure enough, right, you know, the, the subscriber kind of looks at the spoiled kid like, bro, like, <laughs> think carefully with what you're doing here, right? And, uh, you know, the spoiled kid is like, you know, I might actually help them out. And the spoiled kid is super arrogant, thinking that he knows better than the people who run this place themselves. And he's like, you know what, I might actually help them out a little bit and make their stuff less boring and send them some really cool information about some football or whatever. And, uh, you know, the subscriber hears this and says, hey, man, I really don't think that's a good idea. I mean, I'm sure that you have a lot of input and I'm sure you have a lot of good stuff. Subscribers being super nice here. But he's like, I'm sure you have a lot of input. I'm sure you have a lot to give. But look, this is our first assignment and they're asking for very specific stuff. Um, maybe tell them about what you want to send them about football after the fact so they can in like include it tomorrow. I also just think it's too late right now because the people who will be getting the information are expecting, expecting golf information and maybe they have a football segment later. It might just mess things up. And this, you know, this boy kid's like, yeah, maybe you're right, is kind of just sitting there. But he didn't say, yeah, maybe you're right, and like, uh, yeah, okay, you're right, totally, I get it, in a way that's like, oh, you changed my mind. He said it in a, yeah, I guess, kind of in a way like, whatever, man, I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. Sure enough, right, the spoiled kid does not heed the subscriber's advice because eventually, five minutes before the deadline, he sends in the information and loudly says, done. So the subscriber <laughs> knows he's done because he, the spoiled kid loudly says done. So he looks over, he's like, oh, so did you end, did you end up sending in the golf inf information? And the spoiled kid looks at him and says, nope. <laughs> and the, the subscriber looks at him with this look of, oh man, you messed up. And the subscriber for a second is like, okay, you messed up, but does that mean we messed up? Because, like, they're the only two interns. Thankfully, right, the information, like, each of them was given a separate, you know, bundle of information to send, and it was very clear that the spoiled kids was the wrong one and not the subscribers. But anyways, right, they tune into the live programming, and the first, like, like I think it was radio, right? So the first uh, sound bite that they hear was, you know, the subscriber's information that he sent in with some analysis and whatever by the TV host, or not, sorry, the radio host. And then it was the spoiled kids bit. And they start saying, okay, and now in this news for golf, and then like dead silence. And that's when like the subscriber realized that, yep, this is like basically the spoiled kid sent a bomb down the pipeline, bro. Like he just messed the whole thing up. And they're like, oh, Sorry, we're going to come back to you in just a second with the golf information. Um, we're going to go to commercial break. 
and it was like an unscheduled commercial break. And literally 30 seconds later, the door slams open and says, why did we get football information? We're supposed to get information about golf. And uh, the spoiled kid was like, well, golf is super boring, so I thought I'd make your program less boring. And literally the guy goes up to him and doesn't like physically like shake him or anything, but goes up to him very intimidatingly, just stares him down and is like, that's not your call to make. So the subscriber pipes up and says, hey, like, I can get you that information in like five minutes. And they said, okay, good, do that right now. So sure enough, the subscriber goes, sends in the information, and the program's like definitely jumbled up because the ad breaks in the wrong time and all this kind of stuff. But eventually they get all the information they need. And the subscriber, the spoiled kid is like, bro, they should have, like, while the, spo while the subscriber is frantically trying to get information about this golf stuff, the spoiled kid is saying, bro, they should have totally taken my advice and did the football segment instead. Like, their segment super sucks. Like, I'm listening right now. It's going to be so bad. And the subscriber's like, man, like, I'm sure it's better, but, like, uh, he doesn't actually believe that. But he's like, I'm sure you're right, but you can't do this so last minute. It's going to, like, it messes up the whole line of production. Like, this stuff is live. It's not last, it's not, like, pre-recorded, like these videos. And sure enough, I hey, know this is, you know, the spoiled kid's like, yeah. I guess, I don't know, man. I just think they should have really listened to me. So an hour later, because they're all sitting in there kind of like awkwardly, like I, they, they really don't have a job next. And I think that they might have had more jobs coming up, but obviously management had to figure out what was going on with the interns or specifically one of the interns. So sure enough, the door opens up an hour later and the manager comes in and is like, hey, what happened? And, you know, instead of, like, you know, the, the spoiled kid staying silent, he immediately pipes up and is like, well, you guys wanted golf information, but that stuff was super boring, dude. So I was just trying to help you guys out, and I sent in football information instead, and he just gets cut off mid-sentence, and the manager's like, you can't do that. You're an intern here. We got a way of doing things. We asked you for some information, and it totally messed up the thing on live. Like, our whole program got jumbled up. People had to work extra hard for no good reason other than you thinking that you know the business better than people have been doing this for 30 years. And there was kind of like a dead silence when I think the spoiled kid kind of realized that he was in the wrong. And that's when the manager says, I'm sorry to say this. I don't know. Your dad's not going to be happy, but we, we, can't, we can't keep you as an intern. We seriously can't. You're a liability. The spoiled kid's like, what? I was going to make this place 10x better. And the guy's like, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it, do it. Imagine being so spoiled, so entitled and such a brat that your parents literally disown you. This is what happened to the spoiled kid in today's story. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted this story, Brian. Yes, we're bringing the names back. Don't worry. Anyways, there was a spoiled kid in Brian's life. This is a bit of a longer story. I've been bringing these back. I know you guys enjoy them. But anyways, right, so there's a spoiled kid in Brian's life that was, you know, a very, very interesting character. He was notorious around the neighborhood. So there was like one super nice house in the neighborhood and obviously the spoiled kid lived there. And, uh, you know, he's, he only lived there, like, for a third of the year because his parents had, like, crazy expensive houses all around the world in different countries and different states. But while he was there, while he was in the neighborhood, he was an absolute menace. And the kids really knew him because for the majority of the time, middle school, high school, he lived... So he lived in the neighborhood during the years of, like, or not during the time that he'd be going to school. So he was never there during the summer or winter breaks or something like that. But his parents liked the school district, so they sent him to school there. So anyways, the kids in the neighborhood, including the subscriber Brian, just slowly over time got, like, a, they just kind of got, like, a used to him. They were aware of him, and everyone kind of knew his antics. However, as Brian got older, he became kind of more and more aware of you know how much money he had access to and kind of the stuff like that and some people with age some spoiled kids as they get older become less spoiled as they kind of become more socially aware of the fact that you know in all reality it was kind of luck based that you were born into this so you should really act as if like super grateful and super it's fine that you have it like at the end of the day some people have it some people don't and if you have it 
I feel like as long as you act like, you know, nice enough and you don't, you're, you're kind of not showy with it, you don't brag about it, you don't use it, uh, you know, I don't know, in the wrong way, then I don't really have an issue with you. So some kids, as they get older, they start as little kids who are spoiled and then they kind of, you know, they grow out of it. But others, like this spoiled kid, kind of uh, grew into it in a sense. He was always kind of known as being a bit jerky and a bit like showy, especially when he was just showing off things that he, ne he didn't get himself. But it got really bad the older he got. So this is a pretty long story of the road to him getting kicked out from his parents' house and them legally trying to disown him. It's a, it's a, it's a doozy of a story, but it all starts one night, right? So at this point, the subscriber and his friends are actually done with high school. It is the summer that they graduate. So actually, you know, uh, it's it, it, for once to, for once, the spoiled kid is actually being staying in the neighborhood for the summer. Maybe later on he's a trip to somewhere else. But for the first time, it is a summer when the spoiled kid is going to be interacting with the other kids. So Brian, the subscriber, is kind of just prepared for whatever is going to be thrown his way. Um, but he's also excited because it is, you know, it's finally, to, they graduate. They're going off to college. This is going to be the last hurrah he's going to have with his friends who he's known ever since he was a little kid. Most of the people who went to the middle school and the uh, high school, he's known forever and they live in their neighborhoods. So he'd hang out with them all the time. So this was kind of like the last, the last kind of thing. This was the last kind of push before they go off and start their lives or whatever. So this all started one Friday night. And the spoiled kid kind of like pulled up to an event where they were a little kind of gathering, you know, Brian and his friends were having. And, uh, you know, he pulled up in a really fancy, expensive car, right? So Brian had a car, but it was like super cheap car, whatever, which honestly, I think your starter car should be extremely cheap. Not so cheap that it's dangerous, but cheap enough that, you know, you, you have the ability to kind of mess around with it a bit. I don't have a car yet, but I know when I will get one, I'll make sure that it won't be some I, I won't go, I, I definitely, first of all, don't buy it used, or do buy it used, don't buy it new, and cheap cars function. As long as they're not going to blow up in your face, they function. If the brake works, the car is good enough for me. Anyways, though, he pulls up in this super crazy expensive car, which is kind of expected for someone like, you know, the, the spoiled kid, right? And he pulls up, and he's just talking about how, like, he, he's just, like, extra, extra arrogant, I think the kid, like, was kind of more vacant. Like, he didn't really hang... The thing is, right, the kid never really hung out with the uh, the other kids in the neighborhood during high school just because, you know, he was off doing his own thing. He would hop into class, kind of be a jerk then, and obviously, you know, during the summer, he wouldn't be there and he wouldn't hang out with them on the weekends because he was too busy doing his rich kid things, right? But he decided to pull, th uh, pull up to this event. He just came in in the super crazy expensive car, and uh, people are kind of just looking at him as he kind of like walks around, kind of being buddy-buddy with everyone as if he was super close friends with them. Brian, the subscriber, and the other people didn't really care too much because, you know, I mean, ugh, they're not going to be mean to this kid. This kid isn't great, but during this party, right, it was getting a little bit late. This kid was starting to get a little bit drunk. And, or, or Apple, okay, I'm just gonna say drunk. YouTube doesn't actually care that much. Um, and uh, yeah, sure enough, right, the kid starts to brag. He starts to brag a lot about how he's got the craziest whip ever, how he's got access to all these things, how everyone else has to be like worker drones and go into like work a nine to five and then have like one minute of retirement and then die while he gets to be like, have this crazy awesome life. And people were starting to get a little bit resentful because unfortunately, that may or may not be true. The truth is that uh, this kid probably doesn't have to work. Or so he thought until he literally got disowned, which is coming up. And trust me, it's worth it. I'm really trying to build a good picture of the spoiled kid so that there's a good payoff when he gets disowned at the very end of the story. Or yeah, so anyways, right? At this point, you know, the spoiled kid's like, all right, I'm going back to my house. And uh, yeah, this kid had a lot to, had, a, had enough to drink where they were like, dude, you can't drive. Because, like, obviously, disclaimer, one of the worst things you can do is, you know, have something to drink and then drive, get an Uber, stay at a friend's house, or have a DD, okay? A little, just a little thing from the channel. If I can spread a little bit of uh, good knowledge, I'll do that. But anyways, this kid doesn't ignore everyone. No one was able to get his keys. He gets in the car and literally crashes into the first tree. People go over to make sure he's okay. He is miraculously totally fine, but some, something that isn't totally fine but is very totaled, is the car. Yeah, completely destroys the car. The car is totaled. It's, it's not a good situation. Uh, the spoiled kid actually has to end up calling his parents. His parents drive over. 
they're very clearly not happy because, you know, their son was, you know, drinking and then got in their car. They're not his car, their car, right? Wrecked it. They're happy that he's okay, but obviously they're not happy about the fact that like a hundred thousand dollar car is completely totaled. Not going to be great for the insurance, right? So sure enough, right? You might be thinking, okay, well, spoiled kid crashes a car. Does he really get disowned from that? No, no, no. This is a long, long, long list of things that the spoiled kid has done. Because he doesn't stop at totaling one car. The spoiled kid ends up totaling another car. Anyway, so you might be thinking uh, another party and he gets in again. Nope. This is literally the next day. So the next day, you know, the subscriber and his friend is kind of walking around at the mall. And uh, they're kind of walking out to the parking lot. I think they're going to get in the, into their cars to do something else. So it's a subscriber. It's some of the subscriber's friends. And I don't know, something like that. And uh, so sure enough, right, the, you know, the subscriber... He, you know, is just kind of like walking around and he sees a pretty fancy car pull up into the, uh, the driveway or the parking lot of the mall. And once again, you know, the parking lot of the mall, the car pulls up and actually instead of going into a parking spot, pulls up, idles behind them and rolls the window down. Sure enough, it is the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid, um, you know, kind of is once again in another car. In a, literally any other family situation, I can almost guarantee you that the spoiled kid would not have access to a vehicle literally one day after totaling the car before. But since his parents had a bajillion dollars and probably infinite cars, they, they kind of just gave him another car because they're like, we don't want this kid around the house anyways. So sure enough, the spoiled kid is driving around in his new car and he, he kind of like pulls down the window. He's like, it's good guys. And they're like, oh, like you, you got access to another car so fast, like. That's pretty crazy. Loki trying to throw a little bit of shade at him, but, you know, completely goes over to this kid's head. He's like, yeah, this whip is actually nicer than my last one. And then he goes on to be like, as, as you can see, this is a model S1247X5. I don't know. I don't know much about cars. Just talking about how nice the car is, right? And, you know, the subscriber and his friends kind of just sitting there, kind of just looking at each other like, okay, man, that's real nice and all, but we do not care. And uh, so sure enough, the kid's like, yeah, so I don't know. If you know any like banging chicks around here, don't forget to let them know that I'm in a, I have a super sweet ride and we'll take them and give them the time of their lives. Peace, bros. Rolls down the window and literally drives off into the back of another car and totals this car again. The subscriber is just sitting there and just tr shocked by the fact that the kid literally within five seconds of rolling up his window from bragging for two minutes straight about his new car after literally just crashing his old car, within five seconds, just slams into the back of another car, totals his car, which he's once again completely fine. And I don't even know how you total your car slamming into the back of another car, but this kid is just so incredibly good at wrecking his own car. Okay, my mistake. I was about to say wrecking his own cars. No, no, no. He is incredible. He is, he should go into the professional leagues of wrecking your parents' cars because that is what he is incredible at, apparently. So sure enough, right, Spoiled Kid gets out. He's like, ah, oh, man, you're in my way. Like, you have to get out of my way. And like, the other guy was literally in a parking spot. Uh, the, the guy was still in his car. Thankfully, he was good too. He was parked in a parking spot and he gets out and he's like, you rear-ended me, but you didn't just rear-end me. You rear-ended me when I was in a parking spot. Like, how am I in your way if I'm in a parking spot? And the spoiled kid's like, well, you should have seen that I was coming and got out of the way. Obviously, the spoiled kid is clearly wrong in the situation. And the spoiled kid calls his parents because when the guy's like, what's your insurance? Like, let's trade insurance or whatever and starts taking photos. Spoiled kid's like, what's insurance? So he has to call his parents. His parents come over and his parents are very not happy because, uh, yeah, after their son drunkenly crashed their car the night before, they give him another seemingly even more expensive car, which is low-key on them for that much trust. And he crashes into some guy who's parked in a parking lot. Like, dude, how do you even crash into a stationary car that's parked in the parking lot and end up totaling the car? I mean, it's just crazy enough that he crashed into a stationary car in the first place. But dude, what? Yeah, so anyways, the parents are very much not happy. And from that point on, he drives, uh, they give him a less, a significantly less expensive car. It's still like really good. It's still like $20,000, which is an insane amount for a car. 
but it's nothing that, like, the spoiled kid would want to flex. The spoiled kid would only flex a car that is $100,000 or more, because anything less than $100,000 on a car is a brokey car. Obviously not. Like, as I said earlier, if the brake works, it's a car, in my opinion. But, yeah, the spoiled kid would not be flexing his, oh, my God, it's only a Tesla. <laughs> I'm so poor right now. Yeah, that's the spoiled kid's mentality. So, he, while he was still able to drive around a lot, yeah, um, he wasn't able to, uh, was not able to flex it. However, you might be thinking, oh, the parents disowned him just over, you know, breaking a few cars. Like, sure, the kid's a menace, but really disowning him? Like, kicking him out and all that? No, no, no. The story continues. This kid gets worse. So this kid keeps on showing up to these parties, right? And the thing is, you know, he, it's not only just these parties. This kid just, like, appears around the town a ton. And, the, you know, the kid shows up, doesn't flex his car too much, but shows up in his car, just kind of, like, appears places where people are, either that being during the day or at night, if there's a party or something. This kid just kind of, like, appears places, which is kind of weird, but, you know, they, uh, they kind of just don't question it. And uh, the thing is, though, this kid was super egotistical, and he also was, like, super aggressive. Like, he was kind of crazy, dude. So, like, he would, like, just randomly get into fights with people. And at parties, it was a little bit easier to just be, like, you know, kick the two people out. Even if he just, like, fought someone, like, randomly. I don't know. Like, they'd still kick the person out as well who he fought. Which, just to, like, mitigate the whole thing. Just to, like, cool it down or whatever. So whenever the spoiled kid came up to have, like, showed up at a party or something... There was like a one in five, there, no, there's a one in three chance that he was going to get kicked out because he tried to fight someone. But the real problem started when he just started fighting people in broad daylight. So yeah, one day at the mall, this was about like a week, two, one or two weeks after the whole he crashed two cars in like the span of 24 hours incident, the subscriber was hanging out with a friend at the mall, right? And for some reason, the spoiled kid was just walking around there. And for some reason, this kid had beef with his friend. Uh, you know, the subscriber doesn't totally know what his friend did, but his friend, after the fact, was like, dude, like, I think he asked for a test answer his junior year, and I just didn't give it to him, but, like, other than that, I can't think of anything else he'd have, like, beef with me about. So, basically, the spoiled kid was so petty that he was, he was willing to hold beef with someone because they didn't give him test answers back in junior year. I mean, this is the spoiled kid we're talking about, so it's not like I'm, like, wow, blown away or anything. It's kind of expected. But anyways, right, at the, at the same time, so the, spo the subscriber and his friend is kind of walking through the mall. The spoiled kid sees him, and the spoiled kid literally just, like, out of, like, nowhere, basically jumps on this kid and just starts swinging on, swinging on him. And it's, it's ridiculous, too. And the thing is that's funny is the spoiled kid decided to do this in front of the mall cop. So, yeah, the spoiled kid just starts swinging on this kid. This kid obviously isn't going to, like, well, it's not obviously not going to fight back. But he knows that he has a better chance of just kind of like trying to like avoid the confrontation entirely. So he kind of backs out, especially he sees that there's a mall cop right there. I think, you know, the subscriber's friend had a bit more spatial awareness than the spoiled kid did. Because the spoiled kid probably wouldn't have just like charged on him like head first if he knew that a, like a mall cop is literally 10 feet away. But uh, sure enough, right, the subscriber... You know, he's just watching as this all happens, and the mall cop almost, like, immediately, like, 25 seconds in, jumps in, breaks them up, and uh, puts the spoiled kid uh, under arrest. I mean, as much as a mall cop really can. He calls the actual police, because, like, this, I don't know, he, he, I guess he didn't have a lot to do. And so, you know, he asks the, the subscriber and, the, and the, his friend to stick around. Eventually, the police show up. The police, you know, the, the mall cop gives, you know, his eyewitness or whatever you know he's interviewed what and eventually the parents are called and the way that the mall cop and the police agree to let this kid go is uh, it's a little shady but the parents like if they choke up enough money yeah so i guess the town they lived in was loki a little bit corrupt because the cops were telling the parents like look these are if you hand us a thousand dollars this won't go on anyone's records or anything like that and you know the parents were pretty upset about this and, uh, you know, my, you might be thinking, okay, crashed a few cars, got in one fight. No, no, one fight? There's literally four to five other, like, occurrences that I was told, and I was implied that there was a lot more. But there was, I will quickly run through them. I'm not going to spend too much time on each because that'd be a little ridiculous, right? One time at an ice cream shop, uh, one of the subscriber's friends was getting ice cream when the spoiled kid came in and apparently just didn't like his fit. He said it wasn't drippy enough, so tried to punch him in the face. 
Once again, the cops are called, and it's the same cops that, like, are around the entire, like, neighborhood or whatever, or the town. So the parents, once again, have to pay them off $1,000. The next one happens at the movie theater. So, uh, you know, the spoiled kid wanted to sit with uh, these three guys that went to school with the subscriber and lived in the neighborhood. But there was only three, like, seats left in the row, so the spoiled kid said, I want to sit in between. But the three kids sat down and said, hey, man, you can sit behind us. So the spoiled kid literally grabs the kid in the middle and, like picks him up by the collar of her shirt and, like, pushes him out and then starts just, like, wailing on the kid. Once again, the police come. Uh, once again, another $1,000 down the drain. Another, yeah, this kid's insane. Another instance, right? And remember, this kid is only doing it again and again because he genuinely believes no matter what he does, he can get away with anything. I'm just going to tell you one more of these because at some point they all kind of sound the same. But anyways... <laughs> This literally just happened. They were walking down the street. The spoiled kid saw some kid that he, like, remembered was, like, I don't know, kind of weird in uh, freshman year, but, like, had totally changed by then. And was like, you're weird in freshman year. And just socks him in the face. Like, it, the most ridiculous stuff ever. Once again, the police come over, and they're just, like, call up the parents. They're like, do you want to just, like, Venmo me $1,000 at this point to make it easier? So, yeah, a lot of corruption is going down in the city. But at the same time... At this, the thing we're supposed to be focusing on is every single time this happens, the parents are getting more and more and more upset. And apparently every single time this is happening, they are screaming at the kid. It's not as if they're like, okay, then. At the end of the day, they keep paying the fines, which honestly, they probably should have just let their son go to jail for a night or two. Would have been a lot more effective than just getting him out and paying, him a th paying the cops $1,000 and yelling at the spoiled kid because pretty clearly yelling at the spoiled kid was not functional. And the thing that, the, okay, we've made it to that part of the story where I tell you the thing that really drove them over the line to disown the kid and kick him out. So remember, this is accumulation of everything, of everything. And if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. Real quick, we're bringing back the secret word of the day. So anyways, the subscriber and has a friend. We're going to call this friend Will. And Will, a night before, was at a party that the spoiled kid was at. And the spoiled kid had a girlfriend. This girlfriend, he like legitimately like flew in from Dubai. Like he messaged some like Instagram model on like, he just like DM'd some Instagram model on Instagram, paid for her flight, said, I'm gonna like bring you all these like crazy things or whatever. So this like very beautiful girl from Dubai like was just at the party. It was the weirdest thing ever. And only something that like the spoiled kid of a super rich parent would ever do. And anyways, um, since the subscriber's friend, Will, didn't know who this girl was, he went in and introduced himself. The spoiled kid immediately, since he has a one-inch weenie, right, uh, this was threatened by this and needed to intervene. So sure enough, the spoiled kid is like, goes up to Will and is like, hey, like, you're trying to steal my girlfriend. By the way, this was not his girlfriend. This was like some kind of like escort type business. I, I don't even know what it was. Like, I genuinely don't even know. Maybe it was his girlfriend, but not really, if you know what I mean, right? So Will immediately backs off. He's like, all right, man, like, I was just, I don't know who this is. I was introducing myself. And the spoiled kid didn't, like, try and fight him, which is kind of weird. And I guess the subscriber and the spoiled kid kind of just assumed that the, uh, or the subscriber and his friend Will kind of just assumed that the spoiled kid, uh, I don't know, gave up or just didn't care about it anymore. Like, just didn't care about the whole instance. But they were wrong because the next day they went to the beach because it was during the summer. And there was kind of a beach in the area that they were at. So it was a cool kind of attraction. A lot of people would go there. Um, water was nice enough. It wasn't like a jacuzzi or something, but it was nice. It wasn't it was temperate enough for like a pool. Uh, a, and I, I don't know if it's a lake or an ocean. doesn't matter. It's a beach either way. So they're at the beach. And the beach, the, the lake or ocean is big enough that, you know, boats can be in it. So maybe it is like, maybe they live in a coastal town just by the ocean. Because uh, the spoiled kid's parents have a boat, and they let him drive around in the boat, which is honestly more productive use of his time than, like, crashing cars or beating up kids. So especially more after he started to beat up a bunch of kids, they encouraged him to go more and more in the boat. So the subscriber and his friend Will were just kind of, like, in the water, and that's when they see this boat coming at them. And they're like, okay, that's a little bit weird. And that's when the boat starts, continues to come at them. So the subscriber's like, hey, maybe this guy isn't really paying attention. Let's get out of the water. So they start swimming away, and the boat gets closer and closer, and it's very apparent that they're coming after him. So the subscriber and Will barely make it out of the water before the boat, like, literally crashes onto land and almost smashes through Will, right? 
almost really seriously hurts him. The, the good thing is, right, the spoiled kid is not a good enough pilot to really aim this thing correctly, but smashes it onto land and goes, like, right by Will's head. It was a very close call. Obviously, a bunch of the people on the beach were freaking out. Boat was completely ruined. The spoiled kid was yelling at the subscriber and Will, like, you made me crash my boat. That's what you get for talking to my girlfriend. And they're like, what? So, yeah, once again, the parents are called. And there's, like, some lifeguard, security officer, police, whatever. It's a whole scene. Everyone has to clear the beach. And the parents come. And for the first time ever, the, subscri- uh, the spoiled kid's parents do not come in a rage. They're not yelling. They're not freaking out. They're just completely silent. They're very calm and collected. Which, one would think that would mean that they were kind of used to this and they were just like, whatever. But no, actually the opposite. They're done at this point. So it comes over, and the police officer's like, all right, you know, this is a little bit bigger, so we need a $10,000 fine, and we'll clean this all up, right? And the parents will say no. The police officer's like, okay, well, you know, that means we have to, like, pursue legal action with your son and all this kind of stuff. And they're like, our son? No. Him? Yes. And they point to their son, and the spoiled kid's like, what? This kid remembers, like, 20 or something. He had to repeat high school a bunch of times, which is fine, but just context. And they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way. Billy, they look at him, let's call him Billy, right? Like, you are no longer living with us. You have no respect for us. For us, You have no respect for anything that we've done for you. It's time that you learn how to actually be, you know, a real person. They're, and he's like, dude, what? Like, just pay, the, just pay the fine, mom. Like, it's whatever. They're like, no. And at this point, like, they explain that they have been on, like, the verge of this for a while. But... As of tonight, they're kicking Billy out. And as of a couple weeks ago, they had been starting to look into the process of legitimately disowning him as a son. And he's like, dude, what? That's not chill at all. Screw you guys. So yeah, they ended up not paying the $10,000 to the cops. So the cops decided to pursue him. And this kid was an adult. I didn't get an update on exactly what punishment happened. But apparently, like, Billy was still kind of... He was able to, like gets like he was able to get some money out of his parents before they completely cut off all of his credit cards so he was able to spend a lot of money really quickly but then all of his cards got frozen and the subscriber like this happened like last summer so to this day the subscriber has not seen billy since maybe he's in some like random european country uh just i i he has no idea but uh moral of the story is uh don't take advantage of your parents because you know maybe they'll just drop you one day is that the moral Click on the, the video on screen right know. now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. From a spoiled brat who tries to punch the school cop to a spoiled brat who gets $1,000 per week as allowance and demands that he gets more because it's too little, these are the most spoiled kids of all time. Let's go. So we're gonna call the subscriber submitted the first story, Avery. So anyways, there is a kid in Avery's class who we're gonna call the spoiled kid. And the spoiled kid had been getting cockier and cockier, and he was your kind of standard, typical spoiled kid who, you know, believed that he deserved everything and that everyone should just bow down to him. And this all started one day in class when Avery was kind of like sitting in the middle of the class. He wasn't like totally paying attention, but he was, you know, he was doing his work, he was doing his time. You already know how it is, right? And the spoiled kid was kind of just sitting there, and the spoiled kid started, like, throwing, like, little bits of paper at Avery. Like, kind of, like, crumpled up balls of paper, so not, like, so small you wouldn't notice it, but big enough that it's, like, annoying. So Avery turns around, he's like, you know, what's good? And the spoiled kid's like, wasn't me, dude. And obviously just trying to be annoying. And a, no- a little bit of context, Avery and the spoiled kid were not friends. They, like, had major beef a long time ago, and just, I mean, it's not like they still have beef. I mean, that was, like, third-grade beef or something. But they just never, like, re- reconciled, so they weren't enemies, but they definitely weren't friends by any means, right? So at this point, you know, the spoiled kid is just, like, he's just messing with Avery, and he knows that Avery doesn't like him. So after class... Avery's walking to the front of the class with a backpack. He just wants to get to his next class, right? And the spoiled kid comes up to him. is like, hey, man, like, sorry about that random guy throwing paper spit, like, spit wads at you. Like, it wasn't me, but I'll let you know if I see who it was. And said it in a tone where it's, like, very obvious. I mean, they both knew who was throwing it, right? So the spoiled kid was just trying to be more and more of a jerk. Avery's like, all right, dude, like, whatever. 
And the spoiled kid's like, you don't say whatever to me. And like literally blo- like pushes his hand onto the wall in front of where Avery was walking to stop him. Unfortunately, right, the spoiled kid who got everything he ever wanted was also a pretty big kid. Like he just was physically large. I'm not saying he grinded in the gym. I mean, he got everything he ever wanted. So why would he try for something? But he was a physically bigger kid, right? So it was a little difficult for Avery to just be like, no, I'm going to do what I want because, you know, I mean, this kid would just kind of block him or whatever. So Avery looks up to him, looks up at him, doesn't look up to him, right? Looks up at him. The spoiled kid looks at him and kind of just gives him this smile. And Avery's just like, this kid is the absolute worst. So this is just an example of what the spoiled kid is like. So the spoiled kid started to get a little bit more and more cocky, right? He started to just believe that he could get away with this running the school. And the spoiled kid definitely had a bit of an inflated ego. Definitely all the, the ability, because it kind of like snowballed in a sense. Because like the ability to kind of get away with whatever has kind of like led him to believe that he could get away with more. And so we went from like throwing spitballs at Avery to one day, you know, Avery's walking out of class and he just literally gets pushed onto the freaking ground. Like he just gets pushed onto the ground and he looks up and it's the spoiled kid being like, oh, you should, oh, watch where you're going, dude. Like you might hurt yourself. Like obviously the mad, the biggest like jerk answer possible. Like, yeah, it was this kid who pushed him onto the ground. Like it was obviously this kid. And uh, yeah. So this kid was starting to do it, and not only to Avery, by the way. So these were just examples specifically given to me by the subscriber. But the subscriber tells me that this was starting to happen to other people too. Like this kid started to become a bully a while ago, but he really became a bully now. Like he was really just, he was just picking on kids, basically just being a massive jerk for the sake of being a massive jerk. But it went from being a massive jerk to like physically assaulting people. Like there was a definitely a, a line. I really, like, if you're, like, a jerk to someone, look, it's not good, and you will get, like, life has a way to push back at you, and that will probably happen in some form or another, but I really do, I do very solidly draw the line at, like, physically assaulting people, and I think we can all agree with that, right? And the thing is, right, karma was about to come for the spoiled kid, because the spoiled kid, I, I don't even know how he got to this point. Like, it's really hard to figure out how one comes to this point. I think the spoiled kid was just so high on, I don't know, believing in himself, just so high and mighty and just believing that he was above everyone, that he was this truly, like, I don't know, sent from the gods. I, I, I genuinely don't even know where this kid was coming from with this because it was so ridiculous, right? But he basically, at one point, this all happened one day, and it was like the craziest time ever for Avery. It was like unbelievable. This, this was legitimately unbelievable. So the spoiled kid must have gone away with punching and like, like doing all this stuff to all the other kids that he thought that, you know, he was above the school cop. So anyways, there was a cop at Avery's school who was kind of like, he never really had to do anything except like two years ago, there was a one time where he had to like break up a fight between these kids. But that was the last time this cop ever got action. So, I mean, since this, the school cop really didn't do that much, he would sometimes, I don't know, be like, like, watch where you're going, guys. Like, single fight. He would, like, enforce really stupid rules or, or whatever because the dude was bored. But this is a time where, you know, the school cop actually got some action. Uh, so, yeah, this all happened one day when Avery was walking out. This didn't happen to Avery, which uh, it was just, like, he was there, though. So he was able to see the whole thing go down. So Avery was walking to class. When he sees the spoiled kid, Is like, pushes this other kid up against a locker. And Avery kind of just saw this as a normal everyday occurrence because honestly, up to this point, Avery really didn't know how the spoiled kid didn't get reprimanded. Uh, Avery really just genuinely believes that the teachers somehow, by some stroke of luck on the spoiled kid side, just never caught him doing this stuff. And I just, I guess no one really reported it because they just assumed since the spoiled kid kept getting away with it that, I don't know, his parents like paid off the teachers. But in reality, it was probably just because no one reported it because they just didn't think it was going to work and just teachers didn't happen to see it. Well, this time someone was able to see it. The school cop saw it. I, it in previous times, the spoiled kid would specifically avoid doing it around the school cop because he believed like, oh, well... You know, I, I don't know. He, I guess he was still kind of scared of the school cop. But that was until now. Because now, the spoiled kid was just so high and mighty and full of himself that, belie that he believed that he was above the school cop. He believed that he was like, you know, I don't know, the school cop had nothing on him. So he blatantly pushed some kid up against a locker 
in front of the school cop. And I think the school cop, you know, is still kind of, is a little high and mighty himself. So he was so taken aback by the fact that some kid would just blatantly do it. He almost found like a form of disrespect that the kid would he would just do it in front of him, expecting nothing to happen. So the school cop quickly w- kind of like walks up to the spoiled kid and says, hey, like, no fight in the halls. Like, and the spoiled kid turns to the school cop and says, you can't tell me what to do. And the school cop legitimately just stood there for a good couple seconds, completely stunned. The man was stunned, unable to speak. Because like, imagine... You're a school cop, right? You see some kid fighting some other kid. You go up and you say, you can't be doing that. And he says, you can't tell me what to do. Bro, the school's cop, literally their job is to tell you what to do, is to enforce the rules of the school. What what do you mean you're not allowed to tell him what to do? And the spoiled kid gave him a smirk. And honestly, I think the reason why the spoiled kid just got owned so bad was because he was so arrogant that he legitimately gave the cop a smirk after saying, like, you you can't tell me what to do. He smirked afterwards, almost to rub it more in the school cop's face. And the spoiled kid just went back to going, like, pushing this kid up against a wall. And that's when the school cop moved in and said, like, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to take you to the front office. And the spoiled kid turns and says, you're not doing anything to me. Like, I, I, I don't know who told you that you had the authority to do anything to me, but I'm standing right here, man, and nothing's going to change that. And the school cop moves in to, like, grab him by the arm, and the spoiled kid sees this, and this is where the spoiled kid messed up. He legitimately swings on the cop full force and hits him in the face. And it, it, boom, you just hear the smack, right? And the whole, like, everyone who's walking by, like, There's a lot of rubbernecking going on anyways. People were slowing down. Some people stopped entirely to listen. But after the the spoiled kid hit the school cop across the face, everybody was listening in, dude. Like, every single person was like, oh my god. Like, this kid actually just went all the way out and did this. So yeah, almost immediately, okay, not immediately, because there was a brief period that the school cop was just in complete disbelief of what just happened. He thought he had a mini, like, epileptic seizure or something, and he just imagined, or just, like, his brain produced the fact that he got hit in the face out of nowhere, when the truth was, he just got hit in the face by the spoiled kid. So, almost immediately after, right, he just looks up at the spoiled kid, and the spoiled kid is looking at the school cop, looking at him like he's not going to do anything. And it's so puzzling and so confusing because the school cop immediately, <laughs> immediately, like, grabs the spoiled kid and, like, pushes him onto the ground. Like, basically tackles this kid onto the ground. And I think the spoiled kid was so thrown off guard by this because the spoiled kid up to this point had been completely untouched by everybody else or every other teacher just hadn't done anything. But the truth is, it's just because I guess the teachers didn't see any of this going down. And, uh, yeah... And that's what happens when you punch the school cop. Sure enough, the spoiled kid got suspended for like a week or something, had to write a like an apology to the kid he pushed up against the locker, had to write an apology to the school cop or whatever. And also apparently reports came out that this like behavior was a lot more systemic than just like the one issue. I don't think Avery said anything about if he personally submitted something, but he did say people in general, so he made of. But a- anyways, there was kind of an, a, like a, an additional part to the spoiled kid's punishment where if there was any reports, like any reports at all that he does anything like this again, he would just be immediately expelled. Immediately expelled. Even if it was like just tripping a kid or something, which isn't good, but like a much more minor offense than attacking someone, right? He would just be immediately expelled. And if you thought that spoiled kid was bad, this might be the most spoiled kid ever. And we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this one, this story, Calvin. So anyways, Calvin was in class one day. And there was a kid in his class who we're going to call the spoiled kid. And while the last spoiled kid in the other story was definitely more of a spoiled kid in the sense that he was able to get away with anything and he was just like never told no, this kid was more of a spoiled kid because his parents were super loaded, and they basically gave him literally anything he wanted. Look, if let's say one of you guys, or maybe all of you guys, because you watch Connor Pugs, you'll grow up to be very rich one day, direct correlation. But let's say maybe you, you know, you, I don't know, work a good job, make a business or something like that, win the lottery, who knows, pick the next, I don't know, Dogecoin, you make a lot of money. My suggestion is uh, just, if you have kids, Make sure that they basically grow up the same way that almost every other kid grows up with the same perception of like value, the same perception of money, 
the same kind of like I, the, the the most valuable thing you can give a child is perspective. And then eventually, I mean, look, obviously, use the perks of money, like give them the food that's going to be quality and healthy, give them good health care, make sure that, you know, I do what you need to do, but just be, don't do what, you know, the, the parents of this spoiled kid did, where they gave him practically unlimited money, and they thought that, that would solve all the issues of them not being there, of them not being good parents, etc. Nothing will ever solve that issue, and just giving your kid way too much money before they've actually formed a perception of what money really is and the value of a dollar or whatever, right? Th then it will actually, it will be poison to them. And it was poison to the spoiled kid because one day Calvin was in class. The spoiled kid literally starts speaking out of nowhere, just starts talking, right? It's like, ah, oh, guys, I'm in such a predicament right now. And I don't know when someone says, guys, I'm in a predicament. I don't know, I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to hear them out because maybe I can give some advice. Maybe I can lend a bit of wisdom. Um, but uh, yeah, so Calvin felt the same way, but he was not expecting what the spoiled kid was about to say. So the spoiled kid goes on to say, guys, I'm in such a predicament right now. I want to buy these two Supreme box logo hoodies, <laughs> but buying both of them would be $1,400 and I only get $1,000 a week. So I would have to wait two weeks allowance to buy both of these hoodies. Guys, I don't know what to do. So first of all, this spoiled kid was either saying this because he was delusional, or this spoiled kid literally just wanted to flex the fact that he got $1,000 a week and wanted to come up with a quote-unquote creative way to accidentally, quote-unquote accidentally tell everyone that he gets $1,000 per week, and he'd do that by saying, oh no, I can't buy X item that costs more than my weekly allowance, which happens to be $1,000 a week, guys. Guys, did you hear that? $1,000 a week. I'm rich. He, he, he. Like something like, I don't know. So either way, like it's ridiculous. And Calvin looks at the spoiled kid, and everyone else looks at the spoiled kid or everyone who is listening to him, and kind of says, uh, I don't know, just don't buy the hoodie. Like, I, I, guys, like, look, I got a solution to your problem. Don't buy the Supreme Box logo hoodie. Wow, problem solved. Uh, yeah, and uh, basically no one really had a lot of sympathy for him, which, I don't know, I feel like I don't really blame them for not having a lot of sympathy for the kid who's complaining about only, guys, guys, only, this poor kid is only receiving $1,000 a week. He must be starving. He can only afford one Supreme Box logo hoodie a week, not two. This kid is impoverished beyond any comprehension of the word impoverished, right? So sad. So yeah, the kids in the class were kind of talking to each other after the class, right? They were all like, like, this kid actually gets 1000 bucks a week. Like, are you serious right now? And I think the spoiled kid thought that that would, like, I don't know, give him a good rep or something like that. But really, it kind of just made kids be like, bro, like this kid really gets a thousand bucks a week to do, like that's ridiculous. It was mostly, all it really did was kind of just stir envy and jealousy, which the thing is, right, I've never really, I, I, I've only understood flexing to an extent, but I, I, the thing is, right, if you're going to be flexing something, first of all, I suggest just kind of keeping, like keeping it kind of minimum in most situations. But you also got to understand, if you do choose to flex X or Y or whatever, maybe you got the new whatever shoes, right? Uh, just realize that there will be jealousy. Like I said, the whole point of it is saying that I have it and you don't at the end of the day. Like, if we're really breaking down the root of it, it's because you want people to know that you have something that perhaps they do not, right? So just be aware of that and be aware of the consequences that people will be jealous, and that behind your back, they might not speak as nicely about you. That's just the truth. That's just reality, right? But this one, this flexing, blew up in the spoiled kid's face so bad that not even the subscriber, Calvin, saw this coming. So basically what ended up happening was that all the kids in the class, you know, on the rides home, on the car rides home, the moms were like, oh, how was school today? And they were like, it was good, I guess. But you know what I heard? You know, spoiled kid gets $1,000 a week, and I only get $10 a week. I only get $1. I only get $5, right? I, only, I don't get anything a week, like a bunch of varied responses. 
there was a lot of ver- variety in the responses, but one thing was true. None of them got $1,000 a week or anything close to it. So all of a sudden, basically every single mom in the school knows that the spoiled kid gets $1,000 per week just for, exi- just, just for being a spoiled kid, right? Just for existing. His, uh, like, it's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, word started to spread. And by the end of the night, like, there was, like, mom group chats or whatever, and they were all talking about it. However, I think they forgot that in one of these various Facebook group chats that the spoiled kid's mom was actually a part of it. And apparently the spoiled kid's mom literally lurked the entire time and didn't say anything, but she soon figured out that her son had been bragging about the fact that he got over $1,000 per week or whatever. And I guess, that, look, the spoiled kid's mom obviously was not the greatest at parenting because she gave her very young, impressionable son over $1,000 per week to do whatever he wanted with it instead of instilling good values into him and kind of making sure that he under has the perspective of money first. Kind of just gave him flush with cash for no good reason. Um, so it's kind of on her. But at this point, she actually kind of steps up a little bit because the next day in class, you know, the spoiled kid comes in and he looks furious. And he turns to all the kids, including Calvin. He's like, you guys did this to me. You guys screwed me over. And they're all like, dude, literally, what are you saying right now? He's like, you, my mom took away my $1,000 per week. To wi- like, not tuition. Uh, uh, what's it called? Allowance. I don't get anything anymore. It's because you guys were talking all about it and she felt embarrassed and she realized it wasn't good for me and now I get zero dollars per week. And all the kids are like, dang, bro. That's tough. <laughs> I mean, they, I don't know what to say. They didn't feel that bad. Because now it's like, oh, well, first of all, I'm sure if he asked for money, the mom is still going to be like, sure, you can buy this, right? It just doesn't mean that he's getting a thousand dollars per week just for doing nothing. But now, oh no, boo-hoo, the kid gets as much as most of the kids get there per week, a.k.a. zero dollars, a.k.a. like five dollars, right? Oh no, he doesn't get a thousand dollars per week to waste on stupid stuff. So obviously the kids in the class and Calvin were kind of like, uh uh-huh, okay. They, did, they weren't like gloating or anything, but they also didn't feel incredibly bad because at the end of the day, it's like, okay, man, now you're just living like all of us. Like, that's tough. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. That's just tough. Click on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Today we got a story of a spoiled brat who gets exposed. This is a super satisfying karma story that I know you'll enjoy. Let's go. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, uh, Errol, and Errol submitted this to me over on Instagram. So if you want to submit your own story, the link is in the description. We're also on Spotify, by the way. But anyways, right, so this all happened in sixth grade. And at the very end of sixth grade, there was like a very big math exam. And this math exam would basically, it would basically decide which math class you're going to be put into the next year. And uh, there was a lot of emphasis on doing well on it. I mean, they wanted kids to try because, you know, they're apparently like, you know, or maybe in theory, if kids wanted to be in an easier class, they just fail this test on purpose as, you know, if you did poorly on the test, then you could be in the easy math class and then you'd have an easier time next year. But the whole idea is that they changed it so that the big math test at the end of the sixth grade year would also have a pretty big impact on your grade. Uh, I mean, it was like kind of, it it was a weird mixture of effort based, but also how well you did. So they were like, all right, good. You need to learn this material, but it also happened to to like help determine what math class you're, what I'm trying to say is there was a big test at the end of the year. I went into a lot of unnecessary detail that I received. I'm sorry about that. But anyways, right. So we're going to call, oh, okay. Errol, we already named the subscriber, right? Uh, they spent probably about two weeks before the test in math class because they finished, they intentionally finish up all the like the content that they deem need to know about like two weeks before the test actually is so that they can dedicate that two weeks 100% to the test. So anyways, right, they're in a study group and in this study group they were put into, uh, it was basically uh, the at the very first day before the two weeks before class 
before the end of class, which is also the day of the test. They were put into a study group and basically the teacher said, hey, I mean, you can like uh, you can study on your own, but you have to at least be at the table with your study group. I just want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to ask questions to your peers, especially if like I can't get around to everyone. So this is pretty good in theory. And in the very first day, he said, you guys actually do need to talk with each other. After that, it's up to you. So the first day, Errol sits down and the people in a study group are him, some other people and then the spoiled kid. And obviously, right, you know, he isn't known as like, oh, the spoiled kid, right? But that's what we're going to call him for the sake of this video, just because it makes it easier on me. I don't have to remember a thousand names. And the spoiled kid had always kind of gotten everything he ever wanted. Very standard definition for the spoiled kids in my videos, right? So they sit down and they, you know, they, they start talking. And basically what Errol starts talking about and the other kids in their group start talking about is basically what is their plan to study for this exam? Because they all know that it's very difficult. They also all know that, you know, it will take a lot of time and effort to do well with. And they all know that, uh, you know, they need to be well prepared. So Errol is going about like, okay, like I'm going to cover chapters one through six um, for the first week. Then I'm going to do chapters seven, eight, and nine in the last couple, uh, on the three days after that. And then the three days before the exam, I'm just going to do a full on review. And it kind of goes around the circle like that. And people are planning out their study guides or whatever. And asking very basic topics like oh is x on the assignment or whatever and sometimes the teacher would come around and answer it but the most important detail that you need to know is that the spoil kid the one that was uh yeah the spoil kid the one who uh, was sitting at the group with them when it kind of went around like oh what are you doing to prepare the spoil kid said i'm not going to prepare i'm an intellectual genius errol kind of just looks at him and the other, other, the other kids in the class kind of just look at him. Because no disrespect to the spoiled kid. I mean, maybe a little bit, but they've heard him ask questions. And it's good to ask questions. And look, a lot of times in class, I'm asking questions that, you know, sometimes I think back, I'm like, damn, you really were not paying attention if you asked that question. But the spoiled kid was not asking genius level questions, right? He was asking very standard, if not subpar questions. So they were kind of looking at him like, uh, okay, I guess. And, you know, I don't know about you, but most people that are actually very intelligent don't go around telling everyone I'm very intelligent. I mean, maybe if they lack a lot of emotional intelligence, they might, but, uh, or just situational uh, understanding and the logic behind that. But anyways, right, they had a few suspicions that the spoiled kid was actually not the net, was not the reincarnation of Albert Einstein. Um, just a few sneaking suspicions that that might have not been the case, you know. Uh, then anyways, though, uh, oh, by the way, leave a like on this video because today is my birthday and uh, that will be my birthday present if you leave a like on this video right now. It's all, it's all I ask. It's free. It'll take one second. It may or may not help the video. I don't even know at this point. If it does, it's very small. It just looks nice, so go ahead and do that. But anyways, right, so, you know, the Errol's, like, turns to spoil kid after he says, like, I don't even have to try. I'm just literally a genius and kind of looks at the kid and is like, hey, bro, like, I really think you're going to want to try on this. Like, this is a really big exam. It matters for quite a bit. Um, oh, little clarification. They actually had, like, a four or five days. There's still, like, a, or like a week left of school after the exam. It was kind of just that, like, closing time period where you don't really do a lot, especially in, like, middle school for me. We had time after our exam. In college, it's, like, your classes end, then you have the exam. But here, it's like you had the exam, then you had, like, kind of a bookkeeping time and just hanging out or whatever. So they still have a big class afterwards. That's important for later on in the video. But anyways, you know, Errol goes on to explain, like, dude, like, you're definitely wanna, gonna, going to want to study for this. Like, this is a pretty big deal. You're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty bad if you don't prepare properly. And the spoiled kid doubles down on, like, no, I'm literally just a freaking genius. You guys are idiots. Like, I'm the greatest. You will see. And uh, Errol wasn't, like, didn't dislike this kid necessarily, but was also kind of just like, uh, I, 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 I don't know, man. Um... I'm not doubting you, even though he definitely was. He was kind of just like, ah, I don't know, bro. Like, I really think you should study for this. I just got a feeling that, like, you're going to want to study. And the kid's like, you know what? You guys just don't see it. You don't understand, like, my genius intellect. 
Like, you just got, you guys don't get me. And the thing was, like, Errol wasn't even, like, trying to hate on this kid, even though it was going to be very easy to hate on this kid, especially since he was like, I'm a genius and you guys aren't, and that's the reason why I have to study and you guys don't, or you have to study and I don't. But Errol was like, all right, this kid definitely, like, solved a math problem and was just like, damn, I'm a genius, bro. Anyways, though, you know, er uh, the spoiled kid kind of just continues on doing what he's doing. And for the next two weeks, Errol and most of his classmates do spend a considerable amount of time preparing for this test. This doesn't mean that they all do as well as they wanted, but they at least all put in a good effort, and the results have at least some correlation to the effort they put in. But let me just give you a little bit of a spoiler. The spoiled kid did not put in any effort over the next two weeks. He did not study for a second. He just played on his Xbox all day and kind of just expected that his vastly superior intellect in quotes, would be, it would just be so strong and so great that it'd be able to guide him to uh, 110% on this exam or whatever, right? Uh, not, not, not the case. Anyways, they get into class. It's the day of the exam. Everyone's pretty nervous, and uh, everyone's nervous except the spoiled kid. At least that's the observation Errol makes. And, like, everyone's checking over, like, oh, my God, I only have six pencils. What if all six of them break? I need a seventh pencil. Someone help. Like, the, those kind of, like, unnecessary nerves. It's like, you're, you're worried. I mean, necessary. I mean, it's a, it's a big exam. You know how that goes. Uh, but, but sure enough, right, um, uh, they're all standing there, and Errol notices that the only one who isn't super nervous and isn't super freaking out or whatever is uh, the spoiled kid he is standing there and he has this almost a smug look of confidence on his face it is like the strangest thing errol's ever seen because uh i don't know uh, he just he knew that he prepared as well as he could and he did not have the same level of confidence as the spoiled kid so part of him started to believe i mean maybe the kid actually is like does have a genius intellect maybe this kid is actually like an absolute baller when it comes to tests and he doesn't even need to study I mean, very soon you'll figure out that, uh, not the case, but uh, anyways, they go into the test, and Errol happens to sit right behind the spoiled kid, and a lot of it's multiple choice, but a lot of it is also free response, and Errol goes through, and he feels like he does pretty good, and he's kind of, uh, routinely checking in with the spoiled kid, almost just to see how well he was doing, um, just to see how much progress. The spoiled kid, um, very quickly finished the first page. So quickly, in fact, that Errol, in a retrospect, like, at the time he didn't notice, but with future details, he now has come to the conclusion, and probably the right conclusion, that the spoiled kid just randomly filled in the bubbles. Because he got, like, the first page done in, like, 15 seconds, which is almost impossible if you don't randomly fill in the bubbles, right? So they get all that stuff done. Or uh, he gets the first couple pages done. And when it comes to the actual free response written stuff, by the time Errol is done, the spoiled kid is still on the first page of free response with, like, nothing written down. Like, little kind of notes. You know when you're trying to, like, approach a problem and you just write a little bit and you're like, no, it's not how I approach this. So you write a little bit of something else and you're like, no, I can't do this either. That's basically all the spoiled kid did. And, uh, you know, Errol was able to, le Errol left the exam was still like 30 minutes to go because, you know, he looked over his work and he finished. So he's like, well, maybe the spoiled kid picks it up in the second half or whatever. And he has a uh, Hail Mary, like amazing comeback. And, you know, there's still a chance that he'll do pretty well. So they get the weekend, but they get their grades back on Monday. So they all walk into class and they sit down and the teacher basically hands them a little slip of paper. And on that slip of paper is your grade and also the math class that you'll be in next year. Yeah, it sounds a little demeaning. And it's like, oh, you did bad. You're going to be in a poor math class. But the teacher also said, you know, it's partly what you requested because you were able to request which math class you wanted to be in. And he said partly how you did throughout the year and partly how you did on this exam. Because this exam is somewhat a reflection of how you did throughout the year and your overall are you going to do well in a higher level versus a lower level math class is what it what it adds up to be right so the teacher hands around the paper and you know errol did pretty well and he ended up in a math class that he felt pretty happy with or pretty comfortable with you know i i don't think he'd be happy if he was in a math class higher than he thought he should be or lower because he wants to be you know somewhat challenged he wants you know it's easier with like college and colleges and stuff or whatever right and, uh, you know, he looks around, and the spoiled kid, he can't see what's on the spoiled kid's piece of paper. Because sometimes you're able to, like, look over, you can kind of get a sense of what the what's on, like, someone's... I mean, it's not great to do, but, you know, 
don't lie, man. Like, you've definitely, like, kind of taken a, taken a little quick glance, a little quick glance around, right? Just like, oh, okay, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll look over here. And, oh, I just happened to see what that person got. Oh, no, they did not do well. Now I feel better about myself. We've all been there. It's not a good thing to do, but it happens. But Errol was not able to see what was on this kid's paper because he very quickly flipped over and flipped it back almost immediately. So Errol kind of assumed that he did terrible, um, and he was like, okay, well, I mean, kid didn't study, and he just did not do well. Okay, that's fine. That makes a lot of sense. However, at lunch, and remember, this was kind of more of a chill part. Like, this was more of a chill couple days because all the exams and tests were done at this point. It was almost like uh, almost like a celebratory week. So they were all at lunch, and the spoiled kid happens to sit down with Errol and some of his friends. And the spoiled kid's like, man, like, Errol, how did you do on that exam? Errol in this position thinks like, oh, well, this kid probably didn't do that well. And, you know, I, whatever, like, I'll tell him. He's like, yeah, I got an, an 88 on the exam, which that was pretty good. It was a hard exam, and an 88 is a very solid grade. And the spoiled kid's like, <laughs> only an 88? Are you serious, bro? You only got an 88? Dude, I got 100%. And Errol in his head is like, ah, oh, there's no way. And the spoiled kid's like, yeah, dude. And guess what? I didn't even study for a second. And you studied probably for hours and hours. And I got 100 and you got an 88. So work smarter, not faster, bro. Which is like a, a good expression for some things. But this kid definitely just heard it somewhere and was like, oh, I'm going to work smarter because I'm a genius and this kid's an idiot. So take the L. And Errol was like, oh, okay, bud. Like, that's cool for you. Like, whatever, right? And for the next couple days, this happens in class. This happens, like, all over the place. The spoiled kid is relentlessly bragging about the fact that he got 100% because of his genius intellect. And he made the mistake to brag about this in front of the teacher that assigned the test, right? He was sitting in a group, and Errol wasn't in this group, but he was in one group, like, behind them, so he could hear everything that was going on. And the spoiled kid was like, yeah, so I didn't even study for that exam, and I got a 100%. And the guy's like, dude, that's crazy. Like, I didn't do so hot. Like, I got a 70-something. Which, you know, 70-something isn't the greatest grade, but it's not like he failed or something, right? And the spoiled kid's like, dude, I didn't even need to study, and I got 100, and you spent in all this time, and you didn't even get above an 80? Like, oh, my God, bro. Like, it must suck being you. Like, I, I bet you wish you were me. And the thing was, right, very cruel statement, especially from a kid who did not do as well as he was leading on. Uh, spoiler, a spoiled kid did pretty, pretty bad. I'm not going to tell you the exact answer until the very end, but, uh, the fact that he's not like, I get it. You feel bad about how you did on the exam, but don't be coming for other people. Like that's where we draw the line. It's like, okay, you can feel uncomfortable with how you did, but we're, we're drawing the line there, bro. Like, come on now. You, you can't be doing that. And, uh, the teacher overheard this. And Errol didn't really notice these things until retrospect. For example, the kid spamming through the questions, multiple choice, doing them randomly. Errol didn't really notice this until he learned exactly what the kid got as a grade. Also, the teacher noticing that, you know, Errol's like bragging about, or the spoiled kid's bragging about how well he did. The teacher didn't notice this, or it's, uh, Errol didn't notice the teacher was noticing this really until after, and he put all the pieces together when the teacher accidentally exposes him, which I'll show you. And if, uh, okay, I did like air quotes around ac accidentally, but I just remembered that you guys can't see me. So I, 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 did, I did air quotes around the accidental part, as you guys will see in a second. So the teacher's listening to the spoiled kid basically berate this kid for like, you're an idiot, I'm a genius, take the L, Fortnite dance, whatever, right? And uh, the, the, the teacher's like, oh, all right, class, well, let's just put on a movie, right? Let's put on something, just have a nice relaxing rest of your day. And the teacher air plays his screen. And when the screen goes up there, it's not the movie on the screen. In fact, it is something else besides the movie. It is, a, uh, it is a profile of a student. So basically, with their grading software, it's yes, you can see it in aggregate where you see everyone's grades, but you can also click on an individual student, right? And it'll show like what their average grade is, what math class they're going in, and also how well they did on the final assessment. And you know who's, uh, who the teacher accidentally 
showed on the screen for like five or 10 seconds before fixing it. Oh, oh yeah, this was an accident, right? He showed the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid's grade was put on the screen. Was this on purpose? The truth is, Errol doesn't really know, but he doesn't think that it was a coincidence. And if it wasn't a coincidence, kind of a savage move by the teacher. Like, I'm not going to lie, a little harsh, but kid was, kid kind of did deserve it, right? Kid really did deserve it there. So on the screen, you saw a spoiled kid's name and you saw what he actually got on the final test. It, spoiler, it was not the 100% from his genius intellect that he was telling everyone. In fact, it was a 32%. And look, if you got a 32% on a test before, it feels bad, man. So I'm not coming for you. But I will be coming for you if you go around telling people that you got 100 and that you're a genius and that everyone else is an idiot because they studied and you didn't have to study at all. That's where I draw the line. At that exact very situation, I draw the line. But yeah, so everyone looks like, not everyone sees it, but... The kids that were sitting with the spoiled kid, who the spoiled kid was berating, saw it. Errol saw it, and the teacher's like, oh, my fault. And he quickly switches over to, like, Netflix to put on, like, a documentary or something. And the kid, like, Errol just has this big old grin on his face. Not because he wants someone to do poorly, but because he's just like, okay, this kid came for me yesterday because I got a good grade and I studied, but his grade was supposedly better and he didn't study. And he was saying how he was such a genius and I wasn't. And now look at who's the genius now. Neither of us, but especially not him. And the kid in front that, like, didn't do so well and, and the spoiled kid was berating literally just, like, turned to the spoiled kid and was like, huh, genius, huh? And the spoiled kid, his face was bright red. He was not responding to the kid in front of him at all. And the, spo and the kid in front of him was like, oh, no, 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 genius, right? You were talking about how you're a genius and you didn't have to study and how you got 100 hmm, and how I'm an idiot. And I studied and even got a 40 or 70 or whatever. Hmm. The spoiled kid at this point is bright red like a cherry. And he runs out of the classroom because I have to go to the bathroom very quickly to the teacher. And sprints out of that classroom. And yeah, you know, it was a little bit of a tough lesson. But bro, at the end of the day, that's a life lesson. Hopefully that kid will remember that for a very long time. A little thing about uh, being humble and also... If you lie, it can come back to bite you. Like, that's just something that can't happen. So, yeah, the spoiled kid did not get 100%, and he's not the next Einstein, the reincarnation of Einstein, believe it or not. Click I know, on the video shocker. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today, we have a perfectly satisfying story of when a teacher humbles a spoiled brat who is just going way too far. I know you'll enjoy this. Let's go. The first one we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story, Aiden. And by the way, you can submit stories of your own to my Instagram or Twitter. Just submit them to my uh, my DMs. And also, please be following me on there. And uh, so anyways, this all started when Aiden was in class and it was a class project. And these class projects were randomized, meaning that Aiden couldn't choose who was in his class project. And, you know, I, when this happens to me, I, I don't really think that much about it. A lot of times, this is an opportunity to either meet someone new, but there, there's always that time where, you know, there's some people in your class that you know will not be doing the adequate amount of work. You just know for a fact that, like, if I'm put in a group with this person, I'm going to be having to carry all the slack for the group. And there's just really not a lot that you can do about it. Well, in Aiden's class, there's this kid who we're just going to call the spoiled kid for the sake of simplicity. And, you know, the spoiled kid in this situation, you know, he was just kind of known as the kid who just really never did anything and always somehow got away with it. He, he everyone, everyone just kind of assumed that, you know, he paid someone to do his homework and paid someone to do all of his projects and, you know, on tests... He probably just didn't do that well, but since, you know, he handed in all the homework and assignments with good quality, you know, his grade was okay. Was the teacher probably suspicious? Yeah, I mean, probably, but it probably wasn't enough for him to actually do anything about it. So Aiden was just sitting there, and he was really hoping when the teacher was about to read out the randomized group name, said, okay, life will be okay if I'm not put in a group with the spoiled kid. And sure enough, the teacher read out the names and Aiden and a few other people were in a group with this spoiled kid. And this was a three week long project, meaning it was a very big and a very substantial project. It was definitely not one that, you know, you could do by yourself if like all three of your group members were slacking. 
So right away they got to it, and, uh, you know, Aiden and his, you know, the other two people in his group, besides the spoiled kid, actually were pretty good about, you know, divvying up the work and trying to get it done. And the spoiled kid always acted as if, you know, he was along with it, he understood, he was going to do it, and he just never did it. And uh, two weeks go by. We're going to skip ahead two weeks. So two whole weeks go by. And the spoiled kid has not done anything. And every single time he's like, oh, I'm getting to it. Oh, I'm getting to it. Oh, I'll do it. And after two weeks, you know, Aiden just, you know, at their class meeting, because for the project, you know, they, they did normal stuff in class and they didn't focus on this project in class. I mean, they were given three weeks to do so out of school. So, yeah, I understand why the teacher didn't get them a ton of time in class to do it. But in class... They had like a five minute period at the beginning where they would meet up with their groups and they would talk about their project is anything you need to say to your group members for organizations, stuff like that. And Aiden just straight up said like, man, you're just not doing it. And the thing is, right, the spoiled kid had this kind of facade for a while where he was at least pretending as if, you know, he was going to do the work. And after, at this point, he must have just dropped the mask because he said, yeah, I'm not going to do it. What are you guys going to do? This kid straight up had the audacity to say, I'm not going to do it. What are you going to do? Like, what are you going to do about it? And, you know, at this point, you know, uh, they didn't really know what they were going to do about it. And Aiden's like, man, like, that's not fair. This is a big part of our grade. We all need to do something. Like, is it really fair to have us do, like, what we're doing? To do all the work. Like, is it really fair to make us do all the work here? I mean, okay, obviously it wasn't. And the spoiled kid was like, I don't know. I mean, you're going to do it, right? And you guys are going to do it either way, even if I help or not. And I'm probably not even smart enough to add anything of value. So maybe me stepping out of it is actually helpful for you guys. And, you know, at this point, this kid was just, he, this spoiled kid was trying to like trick these guys into trying to believe that, oh, what he was doing is the right thing or whatever. But, you know, Aiden definitely, Aiden was not having it at this point. So after class that day, you know, Aiden goes up to the teacher. He says, hey, can I talk to you after class? And the teacher's like, yeah, sure, what's up? Bell rings, class is out, kids leave. And Aiden, you know, whenever you stay behind, you know, the talk to the teacher, you'll probably like sit in your desk, take a really long time to pack up your backpack, maybe tie your shoes. You don't want to go immediately up to the teacher because people will start, they'll be like, ooh, why is this kid talking to the teacher? Like, is he in trouble? Or I don't know. This, I, that's at least what I do. I'm like, I don't want anyone thinking, I don't want anyone thinking anything about me in general, but especially, especially then. And, uh, you know, so he waits for the teacher and, you know, once everyone's packed out or everyone's left the classroom, you know, the teacher's like, hey, Aiden, like, what's up? What do you want to talk about? And Aiden goes on to explain everything that just happened. And the teacher's like, wow, you know, that's really unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. He said, you know, I definitely can intervene. I definitely can step in and try and help here. He said, however, like, I feel like it would be best if you just continue to try and, you know, get the spoiled kid to, tr to do something. You know, it's not the end of the project yet. I understand you guys might feel like you're behind because you're working as three people for a project intended for four. He said, thank you for letting me know. We will keep this kind of like line of communication, like we will keep this line of communication open because I really need to know what is actually going on, especially when it comes to the grading process. But for now, all I really ask is just, like, just try and get to him, try and make sense for him, because, and the teacher go actually admits, and I don't know if the teacher was supposed to admit this, but the teacher admits to Aiden that, you know, the spoiled kid's grade is, it's kind of in a limbo period, where if, because this project's pretty big, if this, if the spoiled kid does really bad on this project, then, you know, he might end up being in kind of like the failing or very severe standing in the class, right? And that could mess up a lot of things. He said, I feel like, you know, this kid knows that, you know, that he really needs to do well on this and that I said in the beginning, I will be checking for individual participation. He said, I don't know. This kid knows that this is kind of his like big ticket to uh, either make it or break it with this assignment. So he said, I just want to hold out. And Aiden can understand that. He definitely can see where the teacher's coming from. And it's not like the teacher said that's too bad. The teacher is probably, it sounds like by, the, by this conversation, will issue a punishment if necessary. Just wants to give, you know, the spoiled kid a little bit more time to do the right thing. 
So anyways, you know, Aiden goes back to his group members, and Aiden doesn't necessarily tell his group members that he told on the kid, because he doesn't want to have that kind of reputation of like, oh, because the thing is, it wasn't even, it wasn't even, it was, the project wasn't over, and he's already, like, told the teacher. I think that Aiden did, like, the right thing here, because the teacher has the right to know. And also, because, you know, Aiden shouldn't have to do the work of two people if he's not supposed to, right? And, and anyways, you know, the, 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 day, the week goes on, and more and more time goes by. And it gets to a point where the teacher on this Thursday, because they're presenting on Friday, the teacher on the Thursday says, all right, guys, um, I'm going to give you like a slip where you can like say which, uh, you know, you will, I'm going to give you a slip and uh, I'm going to have you guys write it by yourselves and please write your names on it, but your teammates will not see it. I want you to honestly give feedback of how much work and what work your teammates have done. I'm trying to grade this on an individual basis. Obviously, if you all give me something good, then you will all get partially a good grade as long as you contributed, stuff like that. And at this point, Henry started to, re and, and the teacher said, and I will be doing that at the end of class, so please don't leave early for any reason. I'll email you if you need to get it for some reason, right? So at this point, not Henry, that's the name of the next guy, the next story. At this point, Aiden is like, okay, here's a good opportunity, because sure enough, the spoiled kid had not done anything, even though his grade was kind of up to it. The thing is, though, I don't think the spoiled kid was aware that, you know, he was going to get such direct feedback from his group mates. And remember, he already basically told them, I'm not doing anything and there's nothing you can do about it. So at this point, the spoiled kid is starting to get a little bit worried. He's like, oh, shoot, man, like, I am actually going to be outed for this. Like, I'm actually like people, I'm going to be like, the teacher's going to know. And because my all my teammates, they're not going to have my back on this very clearly. I've not had their back. He's like, I, I need to figure out a way quickly. Like, I, I need to figure this out. So the spoiled kid goes up to Aiden. He's like, hey, buddy. And uh, Aiden's like, hello. Remember, Aiden was kind of like put off by the fact that he was like, hey, buddy, because they aren't friends. They really aren't friends. And definitely after that, you know, the spoiled kid went on to say, I'm not doing any of the work and there's nothing you can do about it. They weren't close like that. Nah, not at all. So Aiden was kind of taken aback. He's like, what's up? And in his head, he's like, what do you want from me? Because honestly, that's what it's all about. Like, what do you want from me? You wouldn't talk to me otherwise, and I know that for a fact. And so the spoiled kid goes on to say, so you know how we're doing those little reviews, those little like performance reviews, and how you're going to rate how, how much everyone else contributed? And Aiden looked at him, and Aiden knew immediately what, like, he's like, okay, he wants me to fib, but I don't know why, and I don't know how he's going to ask. I mean, he knows why, because he doesn't want to fail, but he doesn't know how he's going to ask exactly. So the spoiled kid kind of like looks around him, and then it's like, so, I know I didn't contribute that much. And Aiden looks at him with this kind of look of, that much? Bro, you contributed nothing, and you said so proudly. You proudly declared that you did literally nothing. Like, that was, the, that was a proud statement from you. And the, you know, Henry, oh, the, the, the spoiled kid goes on to be like, and, you know, I, you know, the, the grade really does depend. I, I, I do need this grade. I'll be honest, guys. Um, so I was wondering, you know, if you wanted to uh, just, just rate me nicely, and uh, I will just happen to give you this $5 bill. And he takes a $5 bill out of his wallet. And he said, look, I'll give you this $5 bill, and all you got to do is just rate me nicely. Like, that is so easy at this point. You guys have already done all the work. It doesn't help you guys to turn me in. In fact, you'll only be $5 poorer if you don't turn me in. I think this is a great deal for both of us. The thing is, though, the teacher of this class had overheard this entire conversation. And remember, the teacher also had the additional context of what was really going on from Aiden. So... The, since Aiden was sitting in the front of the class, the teacher happened to be close enough, and I think the spoiled kid thought that the teacher was just out of earshot, but it turns out the teacher was just in earshot. So the teacher walks up to them, and he grabs the $5 bill, and he looks at both of them, and he looks at the spoiled kid. He's like, S come with me. And the spoiled kid kind of knows he just got caught, but the spoiled kid has no idea about what the teacher's about to do. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoiled down below. I just like to see how many people made it this far. If you want to continue supporting the channel and help me out a lot, 
All you need to do is just keep on watching these videos. Binge watching old videos supports the channel more than you can even imagine. Like I was pretty sick for the last week. I'm doing great now. Thanks for all your concerns in the comment section. I do read them. But the channel actually did really well thanks to you guys watching old videos. It helped boost them to new people even. We actually had a bit of a view spike when I wasn't posting at all, which is kind of like, maybe I should continue. Maybe that's the strategy, just not posting. Also, if you want to submit stories, Instagram, Twitter, I said that in the beginning, but also if you are a Spotify listener or you like using Spotify, just know that these videos are actually out as podcasts. It is, I think, the first link in the description or just look up Connor Pugs on Spotify. If you haven't already done so, please rate the podcast five stars. I really would appreciate that. With that being all being said, leave a like if you haven't already, subscribe with notifications on, and let's get in to the rest of the story, and then the second story, which I think is pretty cool too. So the teacher has caught uh, the spoiled kid at this point, and you know, the teacher is like, ask the spoiled kid to come with him. And most people, most in this position, of the spoiled kid's position, was probably thinking like, ah, oh, shoot, I just got caught. I'm probably gonna like have to go to the front office. He's probably gonna have a private talk with me. But this teacher was on demon time, bro. This teacher was at, he, he was just, for some reason, the, the teacher wanted to make a uh, kind of a, uh, a, an example of this kid. So the teacher walks to the front of the class. He's like, I need everyone's attention. And this is where the spoiled kid knows that he messed up. And the teacher goes on to say, I, I need everyone's attention. So I just o overheard a conversation of one student who, you know, who will not be named. But the thing is, the teacher brought the student up to the front of the class, so it was obvious who it was. That was, like, the crazy part. A, a student who will not be named, who offered up $5 to each of his classmates or each of his teammates to say that he did work when he did none of the work. He said, the teacher goes on to say, not only is this lying, you know, to me, which will immediately get you an F, and the kid up there is just like, oh, no. He said, but it's also disingenuous to all of you guys and especially his teammates. You know, I give you group projects so that you guys can create something really cool in a certain amount of time, you know, and it, it would be much harder if I made these individual projects. I give you teammates so that, you know, you learn to work with people and you can make something really cool in a short, short amount of time. He said, and it really just irks me when people try to abuse the system. Please know that I will catch on to you. If you try and abuse the system, if you break the rules or anything like that, I will catch on to you. And to all the people doing this fairly and correctly, keep doing what you're doing. That is all. Go back to what you're doing. And at this point, Aiden is just sitting there. Just like, it, it, it felt a little bad for the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid wasn't being the greatest guy throughout the whole thing. Not even close, but did he really deserve this? I don't know. Tell me in the comment section if you think this is too far, if this was good. And yeah, then they watch his, as the spoiled kid is walked out of the classroom with the teacher. And Aiden doesn't know exactly what happened to the spoiled kid, but he believes he probably got an F on the assignment and he probably went to the front office and who even knows what happened past then. So we're going to call the subscriber who submitted the next story, Henry. So anyways, right, you know, uh, Henry was uh, in a class that had every single week a quiz. And instead of having tests, this was a very unique style. They had no tests except like one final assessment and one midterm. But they had no like unit tests or anything like that. And it was a math class. What they had instead was every single week there would be a quiz on the material. And the teacher, and every single week it was always pretty hard. So there's like some teachers that give you quizzes that are kind of very much, do you understand basically what's going on? And then there's teachers that give you quizzes that are like, Here's the hardest possible example I could find. Solve it or die. I mean, it, it, it's either or. There's no in-betweens. And unfortunately, this teacher was definitely more of the second category. And uh, for that reason, the quizzes were very difficult. Sure, they had a bit of a curve or whatever, but the, the quizzes were still extremely difficult. We're going to call the subscriber Henry, by the way. Uh, in, in Henry's class, there's this kid who we're going to call Ben. And, uh, you know, Ben, one week, came up, to Hen or came up to Henry and says, Hey, man, this quiz is hard, right? And Henry's like, yeah, the quizzes are really hard. And Ben's like, you know, what if I was to tell you that I knew exactly what was going to be on the quiz tomorrow? And Henry's like, what are you talking about? And, you know, Ben's like, don't, don't question my methods, but, you know, I know exactly what's on the quiz tomorrow. Normally, 
I, uh, you know, I, I sell this, I, I sell this information and, but a lot of people probably don't trust me. So what I do is if you want to try it out, I will, you know, give you the service for free for one trial. And then from there we can talk it out. And at this point, Henry was like, whoa, what's going on? Henry was struggling with these quizzes and he's not going to lie. He was like kind of interested in the help. Henry says for me to tell you guys, don't, don't cheat. Don't buy information like this. First of all, it can go really wrong for you if the person gets busted and your name's on their list or they just tell on you because why would they not? There's no code for them not to, you know? So in general, just don't do that. Not just you're going to get in trouble, but oh, you'll be robbed of your learning. That's the worst thing ever or something. I don't know. Just you'll probably get in trouble and it's not worth it. But anyways, Henry was like, okay, well, yeah, I'm actually kind of curious, like, what are the answers? And you know, this guy Ben says, hey, like, I, I can't tell you them until tomorrow morning. And their class was late at like the last class of the day. So knowing the answers by the morning would be soon enough. And Henry was like, can you not tell me them now? And, you know, Ben goes on to say, I can't tell you my methods, but I only know them by, you know, Friday morning. Henry getting this first one for free was kind of like, okay, whatever, that's fine. And sure enough, Friday morning came around and uh, this Ben came up to Henry and Henry's like, hey, how's it going? And Ben immediately just said, the first question is going to be like a derivative question. It's going to be like, it's going to be X cubed, not that hard. The next one is you're going to have to find like area under the curve of this tangent. Fun-. So he basically goes on to say every single question that they're going to be asked. And then he said, I also can tell you the answers. The, the biggest thing was the question, because then you can figure out like, how to do the answers beforehand. And, uh, you know, by the time it was over, Ben was like, okay, like, you'll see today that these were actually the questions, and tomorrow and next week, like, if you want to get these again, all I do is I charge $5. And Henry in his head was like, oh, $5, like, that's going to add up. But then he's like, eh, but this is a huge part of my grade, maybe it is worth it. So Henry goes in, and sure enough, on the quiz were exactly those questions. And Henry says, like, how did this kid know? Like, how did he know? So the next week comes around, and Ben is like, hey, so do you want to, like, take me up on my offer? And Henry goes, like, hey, man, like, I really appreciate it. I just want to continue doing these legit. And, you know, Ben was like, all right, that's fine. Just you know where I am if, you know, school's getting a little difficult. And uh, I don't know, maybe you need a bit of a break or you just need a bit of a grade boost. You know who to come to. And with that, you know, Henry was just so weirded out. He's like, okay, sure, fine. And he's just so curious. How did he know all these answers? The thing is, though, Henry didn't have class with Ben. It's just the class he took had many, the the instructor had many periods. I think the instructor actually had like three different classes. And months later, you know, Henry was actually not doing so well. He was like, okay, maybe I need to go find Ben. And, uh, you know, he goes to try and find Ben and he just can't find him anywhere. So he asks a friend, he's like, hey, like, do you know where like Ben and then insert last name is? And his friend's like, dude, you didn't hear? That kid got expelled. And, you know, Henry's like, what? And the, you know, Henry's or Ben's friend or Henry's friend goes and say, yeah, like, I'll tell you all about it. So basically what happened was that Ben like learned that the teacher made the tests way in advance. And what the teacher would do is by the time her last class at the end of the day, you know, was over, she would leave her tests in a big packet on like on on Thursday night on her desk so that she would remember to make copies of them Friday morning when she came in. She wouldn't have this packet out on her desk normally, but she left it out there just to make sure just to like be like, okay. I need to like uh, I need to remember to print these out before it's too late or my class comes in. Kind of like to help her remember. So for some reason, Ben either saw this or learned of this, or maybe by on um, purpose or accident learned that this was the case. So every single you know every single day you know before teachers before because like the teachers at the school didn't lock up. It was the staff that came around and locked up. So before the staff locked up or the cleaning person locked up and after the teacher had left, you know, Ben would like await in the bathroom and then he would go in very quickly and take out his phone and take a photo of all the questions in the quiz. And then the next morning, you know, he'd ask, he'd charge his fee or whatever. 
and he was making actually a decent amount of money because there's a lot of kids in a lot of these sections. However, running as something like the, uh, running a business, quote unquote, like this, you're eventually going to get caught because eventually one person who Ben offered this to contacted the teacher and said what was going on. So the teacher, having a suspicion of how Ben was doing it, but wanted to figure out how Ben was doing it, you know, before, you know, cutting him, like trying to like get him in trouble because maybe they don't have enough evidence or even if they do get Ben in trouble, like they don't want this to happen again. So they actually staked out and they had a, they had a feeling like, okay, I don't keep these records online. So it has to be something with the, like the, uh, with the piece of paper that I have all the information on. So the teacher did what they always did and awaited in the classroom and was like recording, had like a camera out recording the whole thing. And the teacher apparently waited and saw Ben go in, take a photo, and that was it. The teacher had it on recording. The teacher was able to get like five or six other testimonies of people either using the service or being offered the service. And the people who were using the service, the teacher said, like, I, you're a clean slate from here on out if you do help me with this. So, yeah, the teacher got, you know, enough evidence and had a whole case against Ben. And Ben didn't even know until it hit him. And then immediately, like, Ben was just, like, told to go to the front office, shown all the evidence against him, and bam, he was out. Because I think he already had, like, some kind of strike against him. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Henry did not do super well in that class. But at least he didn't get expelled for Click on the video answers. on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it. Today we got a story time of a spoiled kid who literally thinks that he rules the world. Let's go. Call the subscriber Andrew. So this all happened when Andrew was about in like, I think like fifth grade or so, and there was a new kid who moved into his neighborhood. And this was over the summer, so Andrew has not met this kid yet as he would probably meet him next year or when school started in the fall. But the new kid's mom re got on Facebook and connected with all the other Facebook moms in the neighborhood and was kind of just reaching out to them being like, hey, you know, my son is new to the neighborhood. He's going to be starting school in the fall and I really want him to have a good time. Can, can he like meet some of you guys or whatever? So one night, one like summer night or whatever, Andrew's mom arranged that Andrew and her would go over to the new kid's house. And so Andrew can meet the new kid and they can become friendly before school starts. And also so Andrew can meet the mom as well. Uh, anyway, so that night, you know, rolls around and, you know, they get into the car and they drive over. And, you know, Andrew is talking to his mom. He's like, Mom, I don't think I've ever been to this part of the neighborhood. And Mom's like, well, this is a very special part of the neighborhood as they approach a gate. Basically, this was like the gated community part. And a lot of times, gated communities are kind of like places in neighborhoods that are like protected by like a gate that goes all around them. And it normally costs a lot of money and the houses in there are a lot. A lot of people enter the gated communities just because they have a lot of money and they don't want people coming in or whatever. So this is the first time Andrew has ever been to this part. And he's like, wow, like I've never been to a place like this. And Andrew's mom is like, yeah, Andrew, it's probably gonna be a pretty nice house too. So, you know, have fun over there or whatever. So they get to the gate and Andrew calls up, uh, Ben, that is the name, but I'm, if we're doing names, Ben is the name of the spoiled kid who lives at this house. Andrew's mom calls up Ben's mom, and, you know, Ben's mom's like, oh, yes, the, the, the code for us is, like, 4772 or something like that. So she enters that in, the gate opens up, they go through, and they're going down, and Andrew's just looking out the window at all of these spectacular houses. And it's just like, oh, my God, like, I never knew that this part of the neighborhood actually existed. So eventually they pull up to Ben's house, and it is a wonderful house. It is a obviously a quite expensive house, too. They pull up, they, you know, pull into the driveway, they get out. Andrew and Andrew's mom walk up, and Andrew's like, oh my god, this house is insane. And Andrew's mom's like, I know, but don't say anything like that when you get there. And Andrew's like, I know, mom. They get up, they knock on the door, and Ben's mom greets it. It's like, oh my god, hello there, guys. You know how moms greet each other. Hello. And Andrew's mom's like, hi there, and gives like a little hug or whatever. And, uh, you know, Ben's mom's like, well... Uh, ben is upstairs. I told him to come down, but he's in the middle of one of those video games. You know how it is. And they both laugh, and Andrew's like, what? And, and, and Ben's mom's like, well, uh, Andrew, just, just run up there. Run up into Ben's room. He'll say hello. So, you know, Andrew's like, all right. Andrew goes up, kind of goes up the stairs, knocks on the door. It's like, yo, what's up? And you could hear Ben be like, 
like, go away, mom. And Andrew's like, hey, it's not your mom. And you just hear like a silence. And then you hear, open the door. And so, you know, Andrew opens the door, walks in. And Ben is in the middle of like, I don't know, like a Fortnite game or something. He's playing some game and he's completely like occupied. He's like, hello there. Uh, what was your name? Andrew's like, Andrew. Ah, oh, Andrew. Hello. Um, I- I'm pretty busy right now. So feel free to just take a seat on my bed. Actually, no. Can, can you stand? Can you stand? Is that okay? Andrew's like, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine, I guess. And so Ben is just going away, playing his, like, Fortnite or whatever, and Andrew can hear the two moms downstairs laughing at something that probably wasn't that funny that the other one said, but you already know how it goes. But anyways, eventually, you know, Ben, you know, he loses. He's like, boom, slams his fist on the table. He's like, God damn it. And he turns around. He's like, yo, what's up? Hey, sorry. Weird introduction. My name's Ben. What's your name? And Andrew's like, I just said that, but he doesn't say that. He's like, ah, my name's Andrew. And then Ben's like, well, uh, don't expect me to remember that. I might have to ask again. And Andrew in his head is like, dude, well, I'm coming to your house because you wanted to meet people. Are you serious? But anyways, right? Andrew just kind of like bites his tongue and is like, all right, whatever. So, and Andrew's like, so what do you like to do? And, uh, you know, Ben's like, I don't know. I like to play Fortnite. I like to take my uh, my parents' cars for a spin. What cars do your parents have? And Ben's like, oh, no, no, don't even tell me. Let's go to the window now. So Ben leads him to a window that looks outside, that, like, looks out at the cars because he's looking at the car that was parked. And Ben is like, oh, that's so sad. That's so sad. I don't even know what kind of car that is. And trust me, trust me, if it was a nice car, I would have known. And Andrew in his head is like, oh, my God, this kid probably had to leave the old place he was living because he because he burned all the bridges with anyone he could have been friends with. Oh, my God. And Andrew's like, well, um, yeah, it works. It's a car. It got me from my house to here. So it it functions. And Ben's like, well, I guess kind of. I'm surprised it isn't falling apart right now. Like, when's the last time you get that checked for, like, raccoons living in there? Oh, my God. And Andrew's just, like, looking at him like, what? And Ben's like, come, come here, come here. They walk downstairs, and Andrew and Ben's mom's like, oh, look at those two. They're already becoming such great friends. No, 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 they weren't. But, but anyways, right, Ben leads them out, and he's like, all right, man, come over here. He brings them to, like, behind, like, the backyard of his house, and it, it, it's a pretty crazy house. Like, there's a massive backyard, and then there's this garage, and it's a car garage. So Ben's like, take a look at this, and he takes out this, like, clicker, and he clicks it, and then, like, this garage door starts to open, and there are four freaking cars back there, and it's, like, Mercedes S-Class, Aston Martin, it's, like, the fanciest freaking cars on planet Earth, and Ben's like, look at these babies, like, these are insane, these are all my dad's cars, like, my mom has this, like, stupid G-Wagon or whatever, but these cars, these are how you get all the women, bro, and Andrew's like, okay, and Ben's like, yeah, these cars go for at least $200,000 each at auction. Unlike most cars that depreciate and fall apart, these actually age like fine wine. I don't know how, but that's what my dad said. And Andrew's like, Andrew, do not beat this kid up. Do not beat him up. He deserves a punch in the face, but don't do it. Don't do it, Andrew. Don't do it. And Andrew's like, so cool. And Ben's like, of course it's cool. It's awesome. My cars are awesome. There's not even a question. There's not even a doubt in my mind that they are the best cars ever. Oh, want to take a look at your car again? And Andrew's like, nah, I think we took a, a, good, a, lo- a good enough look. Anything else you want to do? And Ben's like, ah, I don't know. Let's just go back upstairs, I guess. So they walk back upstairs. And Andrew, as he's passing his mom, Andrew's mom looks over. And Andrew makes his face of like, like, kind of, like, does that, like, you know, that, like, you take your hand, you kind of, like, make a quick movement next to your neck, like, nah, 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 like, this is not good, bro, and Andrew's mom kind of gives him this look of, like, keep going, like, doesn't matter, like, shut up, shut up, and Andrew's like, okay, fine, I'm not getting saved from this, I just gotta deal with this kid, so anyways, Ben's like, so do you want to see my third floor, and Andrew's like, you have a third floor to your house, he's like, yeah, we actually have a fourth floor, too, but let me show you the third floor of the house, and he opens it, he goes up these stairs, and they walk up, and it is the most in 
insane thing ever. Every game, every toy, every everything is on that floor. It is the most insane thing ever. There's air hockey. There's a bowl, like a mini bowling thing. There's a mini golf thing. It is ridiculous. And, and Andrew's like, oh my god, dude, this is insane. And Ben's like, I don't know, my last house was actually even cooler. This is such a downgrade. Like, this honestly sucks. This sucks so bad. I don't know why I'm showing it to you. Maybe so that you could pity me or something. And Andrew's like, pity you? Like, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, you gotta, I, I love air hockey. And he starts, like, going on there and start, turns it on, starts beating it. And Andrew, Ben's like, turn that off. And Andrew's like, oh, okay. Ben's like, sorry, I just don't want it to get scratched up. And Andrew's head, he's like, you don't want your air hockey set to get scratched up. You don't, I, I, you don't want to use, you don't want to use the toy that's fun. The only reason this is fun is if you use it, but whatever, right? Anyways, Andrew's like, okay, fine. It's his house, it's his rules, whatever. Sure enough, they walk around, and this is when, you know, Ben is like, so... Did I ever show you my watch collection? Oh, by the way, what watch are you wearing? And he looks at Andrew's wrist, and bro, Andrew wasn't wearing a watch. And Ben's like, oh, that's so sad. Okay, come come with me. And once again, Andrew in his head is like, Andrew, don't punch this guy in the face. This guy probably has fancy lawyers, and you will be even more broke than you are now. Andrew, for the love of God, do not punch this guy in the face. I know you want to, but for the love of God, he will take all the money from you, and buy another stupid watch. And so they walk over, and, you know, Ben's like, so, you see this one? This one I got for my 13th birthday, a Rolex. And Andrew's like, okay, that's nice, 13-year-old kid with a Rolex. That's normal. And he's like, and this is a, uh," and then goes on and says other fancy watches. And Andrew doesn't know. Andrew knows what a Rolex is because they advertise everywhere, and they're known for being fancy. Then he lists off a bunch of other watches, and Ben's like, do you know what this watch is? And he lifts it up, and Andrew's like, no. And Ben's like, uh, uncultured, <laughs> kind of says that under his breath. And Andrew's like, Andrew, do not smack this kid in the face. I know, I, Andrew, I know you want to do it. I know you want to give him a, big, a clean sock in the face, but just, you just can't do it, man. Just can't do it. And Ben's like, yeah, man, that's crazy. You don't know what this is. <laughs> Anyways, this one is the most expensive one so far. You want to look at it? You want to touch it? Andrew's like, I guess. And Ben's like, false. You do not want to touch it. Wrong. <laughs> if you touch it, the value would, sh- it would just fall apart. The value would just go down to zero if you touched it. And Andrew then says, well, I mean, you're touching it right now. And Ben's like, yeah, it doesn't matter if I touch it. But if you touch it, the value goes to zero. And Andrew's like, Andrew. Don't punch this kid in the face, whatever you do. I know you want to. I know you got a clean shot right now to just sock him in the face, but don't do it, Andrew. Don't do it. Do it for me, buddy. Do it for me. You don't want to lose. You don't want to make this kid buy another car with your money that's going to be taken from your mother. Don't punch him in the face. He's got fancy lawyers. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, comment spoil down below. I just want to see how many people made it this far, and I want to see the names and faces of the people who do. I'll try and heart a bunch of comments that say the secret word of the day. Don't take it personally if I don't get to your comment. And if you want to support the channel even more than you already have by making it this far, which thank you, watch time is super important. If you can go ahead and binge watch these videos, meaning sit down and watch like two, three, four plus even more videos in one sitting, if you do that, go in the comment section and comment down below either how many videos you've watched or what you're doing while you're watching them, such as like playing video games, trying to go to sleep, or if you're like putting on a playlist in the background or something, whatever you're doing, let me know. And so I can heart it, say thank you, and also shout out someone like this person on screen right now, shouting out people who tell me how they're supporting in videos. Anyways, let's get right back to it. So this point, right, Andrew is just like, Andrew, man, please, you gotta hold it together for your mother, your beautiful mother. Don't punch him in the face for your beautiful mother, man. And anyways, you know, he's saved by the bell because he hears this kind of ding noise, and Ben's like, ah, oh, whatever. And, you know, Andrew's like, dude, what was that bell noise? He's like, that just means dinner's ready or probably not having dinner, probably just our, you know, our entrees or whatever. And then Andrew's like, what? Because Andrew's just like, used to his mom being like, dinner. He walks down, it's like mac and cheese and he's done. So they walk down there, right? And they see Andrew and Ben's mom already sitting at the table. And they sit down and this like guy comes out. And that's when Andrew realizes that they have a freaking personal chef, bro. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. And he comes out, he's like, today we will be having beef wellington. 
And bro, I swear to God, dude, I don't know about you, but I this the this the food name Beef Wellington makes me think of like, oh wow, yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, of course, of all the meals they're gonna be having, it would have either been like gold leafed sirloin steak or it would have been freaking Beef Wellington. And literally, when the guy says Beef Wellington, Ben goes, oh, I had that last week. And Andrew's Andrew's mom and Andrew just make eye contact, and she kind of looks at him and gives him a look of like. You can chill, chill, Andrew. And Andrew's like, my fist belongs on his face. Oh my god. Anyways, though, um, so they sit down and they start eating it, and it's so freaking good. It is so good, at least according to Andrew, right? Andrew's just devouring it. He's like, oh my god, where can we get some beef Wellington at home? But uh, Ben looks at it and kind of goes, goes, <laughs> takes a little sniff of it and like cuts a little bit, puts it in his mouth. He goes, Bleh! This is worse than last week's. And the personal chef comes around and be like, sir, how can I fix this for you? And Andrew is starting to get really angry. He's like, this kid is literally the worst person on planet Earth. But anyways, I mean, there's only so much you can do at that point. It, it, there really isn't that much you can do. And Andrew's like, if I punch him in the face, it's going to be really bad. He's got fancy lawyers. And, you know, Ben's like, whatever, I'll starve. And the, the chef's like, no, no, please, let me, let, let, let me get you something. And Ben's like, no, you had one shot, one opportunity, you blew it. And so the chef took it away. Andrew finishes it. And Andrew actually, like, like stops the chef and says, hey, I'll take that. And the chef's like, all right. So the chef gives him, like, Ben doesn't see it, but Andrew takes Ben's plate with, like, one bite into it and just immediately devours it as well. And eventually, right in between that and like their dessert, uh, you know, Ben's mom is like, so I'm so excited that you two got are getting along. That's so nice. You know, how about Ben? How about we go around? We talk about like our highs and our lows. Let's do rose and thorn. Tell me what was a good thing. That's the rose. And tell me what is a bad thing. That's the thorn. Ben, do you want to go first? And Ben's like, fine. I guess the rose was... The fact that I get to go to bed every night, sleeping is so cool. But I guess my thorn is, my thorn's actually a lot of things. Let me, let me, ta- let me, let me take a second. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I know exactly what my thorn is. You know that new kid, that stupid kid, mom? And like, Ben's mom's like, what, honey? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know that stupid kid that you had me hang out with yesterday? He totally was not respecting my authority. He did not understand that I was just intrinsically a better person than he was. And Andrew at this point was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what? Uh, I- intrinsically a better person than you are? Bro, what are you saying? And then Ben goes on to go completely mask off. And he's like, yeah, you know how, like, the whole, that kid didn't have any money. <laughs> and Ben's mom's like, Ben, I think it's time to elaborate on your rose. I think we've heard enough of your thorn. Trying to cover up the fact that her son is a complete lunatic, a maniac, freakazoid, right? And, and Ben goes and goes like, oh, well, no, let me finish my thorn. Yes, this kid, he, he didn't understand that, like, when I told him to give me a foot massage and I'd give him, like, five bucks because that'd be more money than he'd ever seen his entire life or something, he, like, totally flipped out. And then I went on to tell him that, like, we live in a society, like, the caste system. I was learning about that in history and how, like, he's the peasant and I'm the king in this society. And that, you know, the dynamics, right, the dynamics between the peasant and the king we're not really being reflected in the way that he was talking back to me, mom. <laughs> to me. <laughs> and at this point, Andrew's like, is this staring at his mom? Just staring at his mom. And Andrew's mom kind of like gives him like a kick under the table. Because like Andrew was like, bro, I got to say something, man. I got I to gotta say something, bro. Like I can't let this go on. And ben, Ben's mom is looking mortified because while she lives in a bubble, she also understands What is not polite conversation? And one could say that this was not polite conversation. You know what I mean? And Ben goes and be like, yeah, dude, this is like, it was ridiculous. It was insane. I mean, I offered him five whole American dollars for a foot massage. It was crazy. And he said no. And he got all upset or something. And, you know, I tried to like shove my foot in his face anyways. And that made him more mad. I was literally giving him a second chance to respect the kings of his society. 
I mean, mom, he's literally a peasant. I mean, did you did you see his did you see his whip? He's a peasant, mom. <laughs> At this point, Andrew's like, whoa, 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 whoa. how do you not expect me to punch this guy in the face? By the way, little disclaimer: don't punch anyone in the face, even if they deserve it. It's a bad idea. This kid, maybe, maybe this kid, but in general, no, I don't condone violence. Off the record, maybe this kid. But anyways, back on the record. Um, and Ben is just like, <laughs> anyways, right? So, Andrew, what was your rose and thorn? Actually, I don't really care. Mom, this game sucks. What's the next, next thing we can talk about? And Ben's mom is, like, mortified once again. And ben, Ben's mom's, like, turns to Andrew and Andrew's mom's like, isn't Ben so funny? <laughs> he's, like, a comedian or something. <laughs> he's, he's really funny. <laughs> And Andrew's mom's like, ah uh-huh, yeah. And Ben then goes on, completely destroys whatever his mom was trying to do. And he's like, what do you mean I'm funny, mom? None of that was a joke. You know that. You know what we talk about behind the scenes. Do they not know, like, what this is? And Andrew's mom's like, what do you mean what this is? And, you know, Ben's like, well, I mean, you know, the whole society thing, like, you guys are lesser than us. We just wanted to, like, I don't know. It just looks good, like... It's, a, it's like a charity thing when we hang out with the lessers. And Andrew turns to his mom and says, he's like, quote, he's like, dude, he just called us the lessers. And Andrew's mom's like, shut up, Andrew, give me a second. Andrew's mom's like, what? And Ben's mom looks at Ben and is like, shut up, Ben, shut up, Ben. And Ben's like, what? I'm just saying it how it is. I'm just being real, mom. What's that whole thing about like being real and always being honest with each other. Well, I'm always being honest with everyone. And he looks at Andrew and his mom and he's like, yeah, you know what? You guys are a charity case. We're trying to find a new charity case, right? We're trying to find a new charity case. And when I saw your car roll in, I knew for a fact that you were a perfect charity case. And Andrew's mom looks looks at her watch. It's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. We have a thing at 648. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. We're so late right now. We have a thing at 6, 6.48. Yeah, it's 6.48 at night on that moment. I'm so sorry. We got to go. Andrew's mom picks up Andrew. Andrew in his head's like, yes, yes, escape. And they walk out. And Ben's mom, I hope to see you. Oh, I'm so sorry you had to cut this short. Also, Ben is being so funny today. Gives him a punch. And he's like, ow, mom, why do you punch me? And he's, she's like, oh, he's so funny. I hope to see you guys soon. And Andrew's mom turns around and is like, yes, goodbye now. And they both walk out, they get into the car, and Andrew's like, um, do you think that if we stayed there long enough that they were gonna, like, I don't know, put us in camouflage and then try and hunt us or something? Like, bro, that was insane. And Andrew's mom's like, you know what? I've never met anyone in my life like that. And we will not be seeing Ben again. And Andrew, you better stay away from Ben. Andrew's like, well, yeah, because if I was near him again, he'd be punched in the face. Andrew's mom's like, don't punch anyone in the face. I mean, okay, that kid. No, that kid has fancy lawyers. Don't do it, Click Andrew. on the video on screen right now. I know you'll enjoy it. Just click it. Do it.